Wow. 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 Tennessee Titans doing some late work on Friday nights. They just traded for a cornerback that I guess is pretty good from the Kansas City Chiefs. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. 1026 Central Time. Let's go. Tennessee Titans landing Sneed from the actual Kansas City Chiefs. I still cannot believe it. We just reported this on Tuesday Night Lights and talked about how, you know, the Titans were still in play. It was still going round and round and round. So, again, signing him, bringing him in, I mean, we're going to get into all this. I got to update the poll question really quick as you guys are kind of funneling in here. Again, the Tennessee Titans, if you just woke up, if you took a nap, you got it from underneath a rock, whatever the case is. Shout out to the producer. Producer was the first one on this story. He's like, dude, I just got an alert. Check it out. I go to like Google or whatever and type in Titans and Sneed and nothing pops up. So I'm thinking, eh, what is this? Sure enough, go to ESPN. Um, nothing on there either. Go on Twitter X and then boom, there it is. So yeah, the Tennessee Titans doing some late night magic acquiring Sneed. We'll get into a little bit of that. I'll throw up the report. Uh, we'll see what we got going on here. I just wanted to update the uh, the old poll here um, because I think, you know, it'd be interesting to get your take. So, again, leave your comments coming through here. Um, having a difficult time getting the poll question going. But, again, Tennessee Titans landing Sneed. I want to know your thoughts. Excited about it? You're not excited about it? We'll get into what the pick was. We'll get in a little bit of what the – maybe we'll find out what the contract was. And ultimately, we have to decide if this was a good play or not. Is this a bold move or is it not a bold move? Uh, Ross is reporting that maybe it was four years, $55 million. To me, that would be a steal because the, the first report was four years, $80 million. And then that wasn't good enough. And he wanted more. He wanted $22 million a year. So ultimately you're thinking, oh my gosh, that's insane. That's crazy. But again, he's, he's good. Uh, Thavon says, let's go producer. Ian says, let's go. Johnny says, I am lit. Tighten up. You guys, I'll be honest. It's late, but it might be an up all night thing. You know, I mean, this is just ridiculously. What is Rand doing? How, why would Rand not pull this out? Wait till the morning. Wait till we get some sleep for crying out loud. Oh, heck no. He pulls it out right at the end. Chef's saying four years, 76 million, 19 million a year. What a steal. Rossi's saying four years, 55 million. I don't know who's right there. Amar says great news. Chef says Rand's cooking and Sin City Titan. Shout out for being a member. First one on this. Tighten up. Knew we would get a live show. Of course you're going to get a live show. And I just post. It's like happens all the time. I just posted that. I, I saw something with, I think it was VidIQ came across like, dude, it's okay to take breaks once in a while, right? You know, it's great going live every single night, but it's okay to take a break. You know, take a little family time. Take a little time for yourself. Take some deep breaths. Kind of recoup. Get your energy back. Let's go. Sure enough, post that comment. Bam. Here we go. Sneed and, and Rand's like, I don't take any days off. I'm working through the night. I'm working through the weekend. And here we go. So you guys, again, Adam Schefter reporting first, and then now it's trickled down pro football focus, and it's galore everywhere. Um, the beauty of YouTube, especially what we do and, and, and how we go about it, is like everybody's preoccupied with the March Madness. Everybody's preoccupied with th you know, that specifically. Because it's going on right now, and it's it's fabulous. It's great. Go Illini. Go Vols, right? Both teams won. They're playing tomorrow night. But, you know, radio. Got to wait till Monday now to talk about this. I mean, we've got to go Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. I mean, a lot's going to happen in those three days. Even television. Television, really difficult. I mean, NFL Network going to report on a Titan story this late at night? Probably not. Derek says, tighten up, baby, let's go. Boob Exotic says, Flames, let's go. Let's get it. Keisha said, let's go. Finally, something to be excited about. Shout out for being a member, Keisha. Friday Night Lights, baby, let's go. 
Uh, Schefter had it before anyone. I gave Schefter credit. I gave Schefter credit, but good call on that one. I like it for the trade value and the contract. Uh, I think it's $19 million a year. Oh, Rossi's saying $55 million guaranteed. Colin says it's four years, 76. Well, that's better than what came in at four years, 80. And I thought that was a good deal. And again, if you just joined us, you know, and you didn't go back to the, and I get it with the shorts thing, and this is awfully quick, and this is what I had it set up on. But we kind of broke this down, you know, Sneed's still alive. And there are a lot of people out on Sneed. I'm one of them. I didn't really want him. Be honest with you. I'm not going to change my two now. I just didn't think he'd be worth a second round pick. Certainly not a first round pick. Certainly not worth a next year's first or a second round pick. And again, I thought the contract was going to be massive. So for me, I'm thinking this team's got to rebuild. This team's starting kind of over in a way. They need to keep those picks. You can't be getting rid of them. But, but when it was reported that it was next year's and it was a 25th, 25th pick as far as the the year, and it was a third rounder, I'm thinking, well, gosh, like, I think I might be okay with third round pick. And we went through this the other night, like Isaiah Wills. We talked about Caleb Farley. We talked about Jeffrey Simmons. All first round picks. Yes. Simmons worked out fabulous. It was a risk. Torn ACL, videotape when he was 18, whatever, right? Caleb Farley with the back was a risk. Isaiah Wilson really wasn't a risk at all, I didn't think. He was okay. But, man, I mean, it's pretty pretty fabulous for the fact that, you know, Isaiah Wilson didn't work out. Uh, Caleb Farley hasn't worked out, but Isaiah's mom, I'm sorry, Jeffrey Simmons did. And my point with that is you just never know with draft picks. So if you can get this guy for a third round pick, I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, like certainly all for it. Let's go. Right. So again, Tennessee Titans acquire, right? Bring in Sneed from the from the Chiefs, which Kansas City, I mean, I don't maybe they didn't really want him. Maybe they did not want him. I don't know. Again, it's one of those things. I can't really think they could. I mean, Chiefs can't pay everybody. So, again, according to Schefter, Chiefs are expected to receive a 2025 third-round pick, so that must have been true, in addition to a 2024 seventh-round pick flop, while Snead will sign a new contract, trade is pending based on a physical. Now, the physical thing is kind of a larger deal than you think, I think, because of the fact that, there was a report that he had bad knees. Now, I said, well, maybe that's for the fact that, hey, you know, the Chiefs are trying to get this out there, scare teams away so the Chiefs could get him a decent contract offer that's not out of this world and reasonable, right? That's what you think the Chiefs would do. Maybe that's why it got out there in the Kansas City radio market. I mean, we we see that all the time in Nashville. All sorts of stuff gets leaked. Brucini's one of the biggest leakers for, um, like we mentioned, with Vrabel. So, again, in that upper right-hand corner, you can help out us tonight. Click those three dots. And show your support. Show your excitement for Sneed, because I know so many of you are. And go ahead and click that boom, boom, boom. And then a, a, a like thing should open up for you to hit the like button. If you're on X or you're on Twitter, if you could come over to YouTube, hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you. You can go back to X then or whatever. Um, but yeah, appreciate you guys' support. But I, but I am, I'm, I don't know, guys. Like I'm, I'm excited. I want to get some more of your comments. I want to hear how you guys feel. That's why this channel's here. It's for you, not necessarily for me. It's more to hear what you guys feel about the thing. I'm going to try to get the poll question up live. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull it off exactly how I want it to be but we're gonna give it a we're gonna give it a whirl so we're gonna give it a try here so again shout out to the producer if it wasn't for the producer I would probably have still been prepping the the draft stuff for the 145 club I do appreciate or I do feel bad for the 145 club because it's like every time I go to get work done for them all of a sudden boom something happens so I'm gonna say 
Uh, are you? Wait, no, no, no. Let's do something even better than that. Do you like the trade for Sneed? And we'll just we'll do it real simple. Yes. No. And then we'll put unsure. Real generic. Real generic. But we just want to know your understanding. Like, do you like it? Do you not like it? I'm talking the trade. I'm talking everything that goes involved in the trade. The 2025 third round pick, which probably no one cares about. The 2024 seventh round swap, which definitely no one cares about. But the contract, you might. You might actually care about the contract. Now, it comes in. Colin, Colin saying four years. 76 million. So, I mean, it's obviously coming in lower than I thought, especially what was reported earlier in the week. Rossi says, scroll down. It was a mistake. I'm sorry, man. 55 guaranteed. Just got off work. Make the night a lot better. The font says chef ran wants to celebrate with the fresh ingredients. Reed said ran is going to take us far. He's, he's so good at his job. Now let's talk about ran real quick. Ran 203 of you guys in here. It's shocking. Let's go. Let's keep those numbers up. We appreciate you. I'm t- I'm just getting fired up, guys. I'm just getting fired up. Let's go. Uh, apologize. I don't have the orig- original setup. I just felt like, hey, we got to get going. We got to get going. We got to get going. We got to talk about the Titans. But again, when you talk about this ran Carthon, here we go. We get a report Monday into Tuesday, and the report basically said there's a team interested. And the Titans were named the most. And th- there was a 2025 third round pick and four years, 80 million on the table. Now, if we believe this is true, which it looks like it was, again, the Chiefs radio making a big ploy about the knees being a big issue, which that's why the poll question exists. Some of you might not be willing to take that poll question on because of that fact, right? You might say no because of that. But here's the deal. When it comes to Rand Carthon, if four years, 80 million was what was thrown out there, you either take it or you leave it. And the Chiefs obviously didn't take it, or maybe it was Snead didn't take it. Regardless of the fact, I mean, Kansas City reported like they would have took the pick. Snead said no to the contract. He didn't say no to the tights. That's, that's one big thing out there. Colt fans thought they really had a shot. I think the Colts fans still think they got a shot. Even though this trade's Schefter's reporting. Till it goes final through and the contract signed and the physicals passed, Colt fans are probably saying, nah. ESPN's getting stories ready out for tomorrow. And those stories will not be about the Tennessee Titans acquiring Sneed. Those will be about New England Patriots missed out on an opportunity. How many other NFL teams could have had them for this of a cheap of a deal. And he ends up going to the Tennessee Titans, which a lot of people don't even think we're going to be decent next year. I don't know. Rand Rand is the one thing that I'm learning from this trade with Rand is like draft. He's got a draft. Let's, let's not kid ourselves. I mean, that's a big ingredient. Ask John Robinson. That one got a draft, man. And you can't just have a few good draft picks. You know, you can't just have a few wonders in there. Like a David long jr. You get him later in the rounds. Kevin Byard in the third round, not even invited the combine. You got you to gotta be able to put pieces together consistently. Year after year after year, you got to keep building. You can't have these major flops of these drafts that we've had recently. So Rand's got to show that. Let's not kid ourselves. But what this does tell me about Rand is like, dude, he put the line in the sand. He is not backing down. He is not one of those guys that's like, hey, Four years, 80 million. No, we're not going to take that. And then Rand comes back a day later, like in draft day with the pancakes, right? Hey, um, back to that deal. How about I give you 90 million? No, Rand's like 480. That's, I mean, we don't know that official. But that's what it seems like because they were able to get him under $80 million. And they got him to agree to a sneak, which is just amazing. Again, before we get too excited, though, he's got to pass a physical. You can't just pass them through because you want the deal to happen so bad. So got to trust those doctors with those knees. Now, Titans for life, our buddy James, who's basically our insider for the Titans. He was in the last show and he mentioned, I don't know what he mentioned last night, but on Rossi report, definitely got to go check that one out. But I can tell you, he was out there 
telling us on the show on Tuesday, he was in here chiming in that he thought it was a, he's heard it was a meniscus. So for meniscus, I mean, that that's probably willing for the gamble because a meniscus isn't the end all be all when it comes to knee injuries. Like a lot of times people are okay, relieved for the fact it's meniscus, not an ACL. So that's what it is, which we don't know. I've heard he's fought through a lot of it. Was injured part of the year last year. It's no secret. Then I, I feel a little bit better about that. Now, if it's some long term where it's like bone on bone and it's like, you know, you rehab it, you can take those shots every now and then to relieve the pain, but there's just, you're gonna, I mean, that, that would be something your doctors are going to have to be straight up with. Let's get some more of your comments. The Titans said no breaks today. Uh, Space says good blank and trade. Johnny says Awuzie, Sneed, Roger McCreary in the slot. I mean, that's that's a pretty decent up front. Now, you still need, I hate to say this, I, I'm not going to bring any negativity to the show. Uh, don't forget, again, those three dots, boom, 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 hit that like button, man. It, it helps the channel out so much. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, let us know and hit that thing. Let us know you subscribe. We appreciate it. Again, most of our stuff usually is on full frame. I've been trying out the YouTube shorts live lately because it's kind of what YouTube's been pushing. And a lot of you like it. Some of you don't. But, you know, regardless of the fact, Sunday night, this Sunday night, Titan Upload Live, uh, we will go back to full screen. And I know Rossi did full screen yesterday. But, again, when you look at the Titans defense now, again, I, your holes are simple. Middle linebacker. And uh, up front, next to Simmons. That's still a missing part. So that's a lot easier to get, though, when you are narrowing down the other issues. For example, assuming we go left tackle, which I still want to do, get Alt if he's there, boom, take him at pick number seven. Now your left side's complete with Skaronsky on the guard, and then the left tackle, Alt, and then you got your center, your right, Guard is going to be Brunskill, which is fine, I guess. And then your right tackle is somewhat of a mystery at this point. Uh, again, you got Callahan. You got his dad down there as well to help with the line. So maybe you feel okay with either Radens or Nick Petit Ferrer. I don't know about that. Maybe you find someone who gets released or cut because after the draft, there's going to be more availability as far as, I should say, less availability on teams. So maybe other teams feel like they can go ahead and release someone to save some money or get under the cap, and then you end up collecting on that person. Finding one right tackle seems to be a lot easier than finding a left tackle, a right tackle, a center, and all that other stuff we've been doing. Then it goes to the, the wide receiver. You know, now maybe you open yourself open where you're comfortable with taking a wide receiver at 38 because you don't need to now take a corner or necessarily a middle linebacker at that spot. Maybe you take a middle linebacker in the fourth round. You know, Rand may trade out of seven if the tackles are gone. So, again, I think the point of bringing Snead in, I totally understand where a lot of you are like, okay with bringing him in. But, again, I didn't want to give up a lot of draft picks for the guy, and I didn't want to way overpay the guy. Because, honestly, like, when we looked at his stats on Pro Football Focus, like, you guys made a valid point in the chat. Like, he's he was really good in the playoffs. So you're hoping to get that productivity for a whole season. We talked about, also, we broke down his, and we'll do that here shortly. I'm just waiting for you guys to come in. This is going to be a long show. Where there's a lot of stuff going on. Mr. Producer, I heard that the Chiefs said he wasn't in the plans in the future, so that's why they took uh, 19 a year. Well, that that doesn't necessarily mean why he would take 19 a year. Remember, he was, he was in the catbird seat. He signed or supposedly he got that deal for the franchise tag. So he was okay with that. And he was in the catbird seat when it, when it comes to, Hey, he'll play on the, the salary thing. I mean, uh, the, the, the franchise tag, like that was what 19.5 million or something like that for one season. Now, again, for a guy with bad knees could end all be all like that. Probably not great. So he definitely had to do something. And, and apparently maybe he felt like this was, the best he was going to get. Preston says, tighten up for Memphis. Space Daddy says, hopefully we can get some great linemen in the offense and the draft. I think you will. Chef says, I don't care about all of these moves if they blow up in our face. Rand wants us to win. And I think that's a great point. Okay, you're going to get 
Uh, shout out on the chin. Boom. Okay. And that's for Chef. Not because Chef is giving us some points, but Chef, he's usually here all the time, given his take. Uh, James says, holy Carthon. <laughs> I like that one. Trademark it. But again, going back to Chef, I think it's a great point, right? He says, listen, okay, we've had issues blow up in our face before. You cannot live like that. Now, again, I get in that realm of things sometimes. You burn me once, you're not burning me twice. You burn me twice, well, definitely not burning me the third time. You cannot make decisions entirely based on what you've done in the past. And Rand, let's be honest, trade-wise, has he been burnt yet? I don't think so. Even the Kevin Byer trade, which I totally disagreed with, Kevin Byard's not even on the Eagles anymore. He's a Chicago Bear. He's right up the road, about an hour and a half from my house. He's going to be bearing down this weekend and all throughout the next couple of years in Chicago. Good for him, by the way. Again, did not trade Derrick Henry or Ryan Tannehill during the season. I guess maybe that's but, – but, again, you got to have a suitor to trade. He can't just trade him for nothing. And Jared made a great point, keeping keeping him, as far as Derrick Henry this season, allowed Will Levis to at least somewhat have an offense that he could work with, him and D-Hop. You trade both of those guys, no line, no receivers, no running. I mean, again, I love myself some Tajay Spears, but to have a full year of Tajay Spears with no help, I mean, that's tough for a rookie running back to do. So, again, I think it was... Great how things have played out so far. But again, hey, Ryan, what's up, buddy? Good to see you. Thrilled. I hope we get it next year. Um, third round pick, 2025, seven round swaps. Let's do it. I don't think that's an issue at all. Do you think we get Marvin at seven? Rumors are falling. He's falling. You need a left tackle. You need a left tackle. Luke, shout out to you. Luke was on it too. I, I, I went to X and, and I already had a message from Luke. So as soon as I got that from my kid, I... Went on X, Luke's already on top of it. Alex says 25 third round is going to be a high pick, though, if the Titans are terrible this year. If. And I don't know, man. I mean, on one half, I, I'm not even getting into my predictions yet, obviously. It's way too soon since the draft. But people, people do not realize that the Houston Texans made a lot of growth. Get it. Fine. We'll put them off to the side. That's not a usual thing. We do see teams from fourth in the con or the division go to first, last to first. We see that a lot, right? But the issue with the Titans has always been the offensive line. Like when the offensive line is good for the Titans, they're usually good. When the offensive line sucks, they're usually somewhat bad. And last year it all fell apart. And again, defensively was supposed to be a top. I thought if we were going to be good last year, it had to be a top 10 defense. I know a lot of you were like, oh, blah, blah. But, but seriously, the offense was never, I mean, common sense, even D-Hop. You know, even with D-Hop and, and Derrick Henry, knowing that offensive line, I was pounding on the table as soon as they got Andre Dillard. Like, I get it. Rain, Rain had whatever. What, didn't have a lot of wiggle room. So he, he took a shot in Andre Dillard. Whatever. Didn't work out. But, again, seeing Andre Dillard on the field every week and him not coming all out, and them still shoving him down her throat, you just knew. You just knew. And there were still times where we showed up beating Miami at Miami on Monday Night Football late in the year when we really had nothing to play for, taking down Jacksonville with our guy Ryan Tannehill, ending the Jack Jacksonville Jaguars playoff hopes. Like, those are two wins at the end of the year that aren't supposed to happen. Now, again, Callahan, new coach. Can't say I know a lot about him as head coach because he's never been a head coach before. But if we can get a little more productivity on offense, and again, when it comes to injuries, if we can just be a little bit less injured. And Vrabel, I get it, but he, he, these guys were always injured. I think that's going to be one of the biggest deals. And if that happens, guys, we won six, six games last year, and we were pretty much awful. We were pretty much awful. If Will Levis is what you guys say he is, and now you're adding a few more pieces, and you get me a left tackle, you got me myself a center. Yeah, I mean, Simmons is going to need a sidekick. Still going to need a middle linebacker. Still need a safety. 
man, wake up tomorrow. You got Justin Simmons too. I mean, I don't know. Wouldn't put it past Rand at this point. Still need a safety. Great point. Seventh layer of hair. I'm the biggest Vrabel fan, but Rand has won me over. And again, I, I don't know if it was just Rand. I don't think it was Rand. I don't. I don't think it was Rand at all. I think Rand kind of came in and knew he, he was supposed to work with Vrabel. I get it. GMs always want to have their guy. But I think Rand, to be fair, tried to make it work. I mean, I think that's fair. When you hear reports that Vrabel squashed the Henry deal, Vrabel squashed trading DeAndre Hopkins, like, why does a head coach have more power than the GM? And it, and if that happened, then Amy deserves some, some of the backlash for that. I get it. Everyone loves Amy because she fires people. Fine. But at the end of the day, like, seriously, if Amy's allowing that to happen, and maybe that's the reason why she did fire him, and then it would make perfect sense. But again, probably should have fired him earlier than than waiting to the end of the year. Because she didn't she didn't want to not fire her GM the year before when we were right in the playoff thick of things playing Jacksonville that weekend, which totally ended our seasons. What's gonna happen with White? Isn't he supposed to visit? Um we do have White supposed to visit. That's a great point by the producer. Got to get the producer down here. What is he doing? Mr. Producer, where are you at, my friend? Interesting, Mr. I mean, Mr. Producer coming through. You're not going to get that anywhere else tonight. You're just not. I mean, you're going to get a lot of emotion, and you're going to get a lot of, hey, this is what happened, and reading off a screen. And, uh, that's fine. But you're not going to get that. What's going on with White? What's going on with White, the cornerback from Buffalo who's supposed to visit after the Rams? Do you cancel it? Do you still bring him in? That's a great point, Mr. Pro Mr. Producer's getting a shout out. Man, that that's legit producer. Titan South, thanks for being a member, man. Thanks for being here. Just gaming. What do you think on the Dolphin front? Just gaming YT. I I mean, you got Aaron Brewer. You'll be, you'll be, you'll be fine. You got yourself a great center. I'm kidding. Aaron Brewer is a great guy. I just, I don't know. I think you're really setting yourself up for a little bit of uh, backlash with Aaron Brewer. Again, we know as Titan fans because we watch them all the time. The national media, the, the local media, and the Dolphins market—they're not picking up on that thing because number one, the national media doesn't watch the Titans all the time, and number two. I doubt local media in, in Miami watches the Titans. So, again, Aaron Brewer, be careful with that one. Although I do like your team. I think the Dolphins are a good football team, and, and it sucks what happened to them in the year. Um, they definitely were on free fall. Again, three dots. Boom, boom, boom. Okay? If you see that little red button flashing, I definitely hit that for the channel. And then also, if you see the three red, three uh, white dots, I think they are in the upper right-hand corner. If you hit that, on, uh, it will un unlock the, um, the like button. It's harder to find on YouTube Shorts Live. But it definitely helps us out. We appreciate it. Uh, Keisha said, I heard about those knees. Uh, Johnny says, we can draft a left tackle at seven. Alt, hopefully, I agree with that. A D lineman at 38. Again, you got to fix, fill those holes. So right now, if, you're, if we're looking at the Sneed deal, cornerback, you feel good about. You got three solid corners, okay? A Wouzier is solid. Again, McCreary, had a, he was the best of the Titans last year, 72 overall grade. He's not great, but he's serviceable. He, he's good. He's a good slot corner. And then you got your buddy um, Sneed now, who is going to be your number one. You add another corner to the mix from the draft. Let, let's just throw it out there, okay? Let's say Rand's like, you know what? I need to mix some youth with some old, right? So I got Sneed, who's like a fair, like he's 27 or whatever he is. You know, Wouzier, is he like going to be 29 or maybe going on 30, whatever? It's a little bit older. But then you got McCrary, he's relatively young. You bring in a guy like Kool Aid from Alabama, who's going to give you uh, that more bump and run, who's going to uh, be okay on an island, who's a smart player, not overly quick, but definitely a smart guy, can play zone, can play multiple fronts can come off the edge. I mean, he would be an amazing tool to have in your toolbox for a defensive coordinator. Again, adding up on those weapons, that's why I think at seven, you got to go tackle. 
because you need that. You cannot play an entire season with no right tackle or left tackle again. Can, can I hear an amen on that one at least? Like, whether you like me or you don't like me, can you at least agree with me on that point? We cannot go into another Tennessee Titans season with no left tackle and no right tackle. And no, no, none of these guys on the roster right now, Dillard, okay, he uh, he's gone, right? We don't have to worry about him anymore. But Radens, uh, uh, Nick Petit Ferrer, I mean, these guys are not going to be guys that we can at least go into the air and count on these guys. So we need, we need to fill those spots. And I would rather be okay with trying to fit in Radens, Radens and uh, Nick Petit Ferrer on that right side than having to try to, to both guys on both sides. I mean, we need a left tackle. But my point is, at 38 now, you got to take the best available player other than running back, right? So if that's wide receiver, I guess you're taking a wide receiver there. If that's corner, I'm taking a corner. If it's defense alignment, I'm taking that defense alignment and middle linebacker, fine. Maybe we don't take the safety there. But my point is, could you imagine having Sneed as your one? And then having uh, Awuzie and McCrary and then having Kool-Aid come in. Like, you're talking about not just having one of the best, okay, decent secondaries. You're, you're talking about possibly an elite secondary. When is the last time the Titans have had something elite? They've had a running back who's been elite. They've had a defensive line that was elite, even though it didn't get us past Burrow in the playoffs as the number one seed. But you don't realize just how dominant that defensive line was. Realistically, 11 sacks in that divisional game against the Bengals. Two didn't count. And there were ta- they were sacks that happened, and then the flag came out. So it actually played itself out. And Burrow almost tore his, his knee off on two of those sacks that didn't even count. The point is the Titans were on him like hot glue all night long. And it just wasn't enough because Ryan Tannehill decided he was going to throw to the other team all night long. So, and, and, and Downey, don't get me started on him. But my point is, like, this trade, even though I don't agree with it in context of trading a higher pick, like a first round, second round from this year, but you had cap room, fine, you're giving him the money, and you got it under what you were going to originally give. You did not overspend like they wanted you to. Great. I, I mean, now I think this opens the door to fill a role. We talked about White coming in. White, White is fine, right? Tredavious White is fine. The problem is he's not reliable. Last two years, what is it, ACL and an Achilles? It's not great, okay? So certainly he's going to feel some effects really not playing the last two years. But I'm telling you, him coming to the Titans to try to help your, your secondary out, fine, you take him. But if you're paying him a good amount of money and you're also, you know – he could be hurt after week three. I mean, that's just going to lead down to this chaos again. So again, I, I like the fact that you just got to hope those knees are right. And if you're just joining us again, Titans have traded for Snead to 2025 third round pick. It's a 2024 seventh round swap party, baby. So we're going to swap picks for its seventh round. No one cares about that. And apparently you guys are telling me four years, about 76 million. Some of you are saying 55 million guarantee about 19 million a season. He wanted 22. He gets 19. I think that's fair. The only thing I would caution you on, and producer had a good point too, is the knees got to check out. If they're really that big of a deal, your medical staff's going to get an opportunity per passing the physical. So that's pretty much the last roadblock here. Colts, you're out. Sorry, but that's just the way it is. So you can keep telling us how great you are, and that's totally fine. You can tell us now how you don't want Sneed because I know that's coming next. I know the... Other than Anvil, I know that the, the storylines when it comes to the Indianapolis Colts, all right, they're all for whoever you're going to get. But the moment the Titans come out of nowhere and snag them up, that is, oh, we didn't want them. We didn't want them. They're terrible. They're bad players. We don't want them. They're hurt. Just wait for it. Uh, Fulton, the Charger. Oh, my gosh. I think Buck Rising was disappointed on that one. Today's a good day. Heck, yeah, it is. Heck yeah, it is, Yanksy. It's definitely a good day. Titans hate third round picks, apparently, says Alex. Demario, tighten up, buddy. Tom Miller, I was strongly against the rumors, but think this is good. I'm the same way, man. I I fit in your camp. I I, I agree with everything you said, Tom. That that's me. And that's how I felt. And, and I'm not afraid to to share that. I 
I cannot. So you guys know the people that are loyal to this channel that are here every night, 425 of you in the house, 69 likes. Are you kidding me? Hit that subscribe button. We'd appreciate it. Um, again, when we when we talk, you you know me. And, and the one thing that I just cannot stand is when people flip-flop. And, and at one time, you know, they're all for it, and then something happens, and then they're all against it. I, that's the one thing I cannot stand on people. And, uh, again, if you have an opinion, then you know what? Stick to your opinion. It is what it is, you know, and I, and I flat out said, you know, for me personally, um, I'm, I'm okay with sticking to my opinion. I didn't really feel like I wanted to give a first or second round pickup for the guy. I think I'm okay by saying that I didn't want to way overspend for the guy. I think I'm okay by saying that, but how ran portrayed this out and how the rumors were going around this week. I said, you know what? That, that, that would not be bad. I would be for it if it was four years, 80 million. And only a 2025 third round pick. I told you I'd be okay with that. And what happened? We did it. King Isaac says it's robbery. I'm, I'm assuming for the Titans. Again, don't forget to check that poll out. Right now, the poll just kind of looking. And I do have some super chats I'm going to get to. So I appreciate it. I see Christopher Stone's super chat. Stanley super chat. Right now, the poll. I only have 96 of you that voted on that thing. Come on, you guys. 87% are saying, heck yeah, for sure. 7% are saying no. 5% are saying unsure. So only about 12% are not exactly sold on this at the moment, okay? Which which is fine. That's why I asked you that. Uh, let's get to some of the super chats right now. Uh, Christopher Stone. Shout out to him. $10 super chat. Appreciate you, buddy. He says, this is so massive. Different. For a Titans offseason, I'm glad I can say I was wrong about the future after we fired Vrabel. Ron has been cooking. Ran, Ran has been cooking. So, again, Christopher Stone, thanks for the super chat, my man. Appreciate it. Again, Ran Carton goes out, and, and you know what? This is why GMs do what they do. Again, I'll be honest. When I heard the news that the Titans were uh, sniffing around when it came to Snead, I'm like, don't buy it. I posted that. I left it on there, by the way. You can go comment and tell me how wrong I was. Because I just felt like what we were doing is, obviously, we had a lot of holes. So why would we give away a first-round pick? Why would we give away two first-round picks? Why would we give away a first and a second-round pick? It just made no sense. I never thought at once you could get away by getting this guy for a third round pick. I didn't think that at once. And also thinking to myself, my gosh, like a third round pick for a guy that you franchise tagged and you were okay with paying $19.5 million. That to me comes to play that maybe, maybe the Chiefs didn't think he would play on that. You know what I mean? Maybe they thought he would sit out. Maybe they thought the knees weren't worth risking. That came out. I, I thought it was all fake, but that did come out. So maybe that's the reason. There's got to be a reason why the, the Chiefs said no thanks to Snead. I mean, there, there has to be one. Because teams don't let good players go, and especially young players. So there, there has to be something. But it qu quite possibly could be Chiefs are going to win Super Bowls with Patrick Mahomes, whether you're with them or you're, you're without anybody else. As long as you have Patrick Mahomes, they got Chris Jones back. They feel like they're ready to go. So there's that too. Super chat from Stanley. Shout out to Stanley. Says, man, these Colts fans on a Bleacher Report are so salty. Man. I know. I knew it was coming. And I don't have anything against Colt fans. Okay. Uh, I like the AFC South. I think the AFC South is uh, it's a good division. Got some promising quarterbacks coming up through it. But uh, I'm just telling you, I know the story when it comes to Colt fans, and that and that's their, you know, that's their Achilles heel or whatever. That's that's the thing that they do, like, they love to do, and um, just throwing it out there to you. Okay, uh, preach upload says Jonathan. Uh, let's see, Titan Man, 9,000. I've never remember seeing myself some Titan Man 9,000 before. He says, oh, all the turntables have turned. Let's go. Jake 24 Titan says amen. 
Uh, Kool-Aid returns kicks at Alabama. Got to bring him in. He's kind of like my uh, my guy that I want. I, I, the more and more I look at him, man, and again, that's coming out. That was supposed to come out tomorrow, and I got to make it happen. So I'm staying up all night tonight. I'm just telling you up front. I'm staying. Who knows? Maybe we'll just live stream all night. But but the point I'm trying to say when it comes to that, I, I, again, having an elite core on this team at some place, I mean, pfft, that that definitely puts you over the top. As opposed to being okay and average in every other position. Uh, like a true elite cornerback, Finnegan maybe says, Rossi, DC Real said, yeah, we still need a right tackle and a right guard. Bad, I'm sorry. And right guard is definitely worth discussing. I mean, some of you, when we got Brunskill, were like, oh, my gosh, he's going to be an awesome starter, and he was the best sixth man. And 49er fans were like, yeah, he was okay. He was okay. But, again, some of us did that with Andre Dillard, too. Oh, my gosh, Rand strikes again. Former first-round pick, $10 million a year. Let's go. And, and Eagle fans were like, oh, the guy was awful. And they're right. So, sometimes you got to listen to the fans. Got to listen to the fans. Uh, training camp's going to be intense. Defensive backs, wide receiver. That's a really good point. Is it Yermi? That, that's a really good point. I like that. Why you got to bring up that game and break our hearts? <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to. I'm way behind. I got to catch up. Uh, do you remember me? The world of the internet. Yeah, you're usually first. And I can't forget the cross, my man. Stanley says, now all of a sudden it's not worth it. Man, they can get with it all that. Uh, Mar is it Marta Vicious? What's going on? Tighten up. We got a thumbs down. Shout out to whoever that was. We got to replace Stonehouse for at least this year. Well, I mean, that we we need a punter, um, but Stonehouse, wow, how amazing he was. But we did at least sign our, our long snapper. You always got to have a long snapper, so shout out to Morgan Cox. And then you also need a field goal kicker, and, you know, Nick Folk's coming back. He actually was pretty good last year. So hopefully the 40-year-old phenom will come back and be pretty good. Marcus says, uh, Marcus Sankey, relation to Bishop Sankey. I don't know. Maybe you are, but says maybe Farley can finally get – I mean, yeah, if Farley comes back. That's a great point, too. Farley comes back, and he actually can give you some minutes. You know? I mean, that's – I I still love Caleb Farley. I, I get it. But, you know, I, I he's got a lot to overcome uh, for sure. And, um, like I say, still pray for that dude uh, all the time. And, and I know that that's not something that can easily be changed, like overnight stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, that. that's a big deal. Um, to be able to come back from that. So he's got the mental side of it now, and he's got the physical side. So he's got a lot. Let's see. Upload. See, Ivory on one says, Upload, as recent GMs we've had over the years, how well do you rank rank over those and, and those guys? Well, I think number one you got to put on the, on, the, on the top of the mountain has to be, has to be our guy Floyd Reese. It just has to be Floyd Reese. And I know some of you are back and forth, but the problem with Floyd ran into – Bud, you know, you know, shout out to Bud and up above or whatever. And, and Amy, we love Amy, but, but again, Bud kind of got in the way of some things Floyd wanted to do. And then ultimately Bud loved Jeff Fisher, which also hurt Floyd in what he could do. There was uh multiple, multiple stories. If you ever listened to Floyd, uh, Jared in the GM, he, he shared a lot of great stuff, right? I get it. Floyd wasn't great at talking hockey, but you didn't really expect Floyd. He did, he did a great job, though, if you listen to that. Um, but but his his was football, and, and Floyd was a real. He was realistic, you know. Like when when these seasons would start for the Titans, and you were, you're going to ask, "Hey, are the Titans going to be good?" Floyd would always say, "We don't have a right tackle." We're and that that was his answer to everything until you filled that right tackle spot, and they did officially with Conklin, and all of a sudden they got pretty good again but I think when you look at GM's Floyd you've heard the stories you know didn't want Vince Young um that was not Floyd's guy did not want or wanted Devin Hester uh they wanted to go a different direction I can't remember who they took did they take Lindell White I can't remember who they exactly took there but there are multiple stories of who Floyd wanted and he got outranked, and, and maybe that's in every organization. John Robinson was on the path, but Robinson really started to kind of 
you know, I, I don't I think John John's when John came in, John was all about the state and he was about the team and he was a Tennessee kid and got, you know, that was his, his dream job and, and Amy loved him. And like he, he, he was the only one apparently that would put up with malarkey, even though I still like malarkey. We're eight likes away from a hundred, by the way, if you could help us get there, I appreciate it. we're at four eleven, but we're at eight likes away from a hundred and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We appreciate y'all. But again, when it go, when you go to, when you went to John Robinson, Everything was starting really good. He knew he needed to fix the offensive line. He needed. He knew he needed to bolster up the defensive line. And, and to be fair, he did that. He built an elite defensive line. He built a really good offensive line to the fact that the man in the playoff games against New England and Baltimore, man, these guys were churning. These guys were mauling people. This was a great offensive line. But then all of a sudden... Not re-signing Jack Conklin because you wanted to do it the New England way. That, that to me, that was the beginning of the end for John. Rod. One little move with Jack Conklin, and he ended up going for like fourteen million. And again, you tried to go cheap on that right side, and it ultimately came back and bit you in the butt. E.G. Let's go. I was good with the third for next the whole time. Again, if you're just waking up the Tennessee Titans, or you're just about to go to bed, or you're just finishing up with March Madness. The Titans just landed Sneed from the Chiefs. Ah, it's it's still hard for me to even think about it. And all it took was a third round pick for next year and a seventh round swap party this year on uh uh 2024. That's all it took. And then obviously you had to pay him. So they're gonna pay him apparently four years, 76 million. I'm hearing roughly around 19 a year, which would be a win. Ivy family, Detroit Lions for the Super Bowl this year. All from the Ivy fam. Shout out to you. I, I Again, you talk about Lions? Man, did you let one get away against the 49ers or what? I, I was pulling for you, though. I was pulling for the Lions. I thought the Lions would have been a nice addition to the Super Bowl this year. Um, seems like you got a really good coach, though, guy. I mean, seriously, yeah, you're in really good shape over in Detroit. Jonathan took really from the Jags, took Snead from the Colts, and the Texans are next to hit the list. Well, it just depends on who you want to get, who you want, who who's out there that you want. Now, please don't tell me T Higgins. At least I can say I was right about that. I was right about everything. I was wrong about everything else, but I was right about T Higgins. It just amazes me. Like, what do you think T Higgins is going for? If Snead went for a third round pick, what do you think uh, T Higgins is going for? The world of the internet would not trade Snead for a third and a couple of sevenths. Uh, well, you don't have to trade a couple of seven. I think you're swapping sevens, right? Who wouldn't trade a third for a lockdown corner? Afio says, if Sneed's a top five or top ten cornerback, I really only watch the Titans. Well, we're going to get into that. Um, we're at 105 likes. I'm, I'm waiting for a transition here. but I'm waiting to run up and get a quick drink and stuff like that so I can keep going here. Uh, I'm thinking uh, some peach tea for the good old voice here. Um, usually I get spoiled when everybody's up, but unfortunately everybody's sleeping at this point. I don't even know if producer's still up, but again, I, I think when you look at it, we're going to look at pro football folk. It's not as great as you think it is, but I forget who it was in the chat made a great point. If you only go back and watch the playoff games and the super bowl and how we took out Tyreek Hill and how he really did set the tone defensively on the corner on for the corner position. I think that is where his ultimate value goes. Again, his work. I, I can tell you this from memory, his worst score overall in pro football focus was like a 49 and it happened week one on that Thursday night game against the Detroit Lions. And guess what? The chiefs lost. But when he's productive, he was really, really good. He had like back-to-back 90 scores against the Bills and the Patriots towards the end of the year. Like he's not – and here's the other thing I remember on Snead real quick. 55 quarterback ranking, rating when, when teams would throw his way. 55. So quarterbacks had a 55 passer rating thrown in his direction, which basically means like the guy – is not going to let you catch the football. It's what you want. That's what Luke said, locked down corner. The other thing is he's under 10 yards a catch. That's pretty cool. 
That is pretty cool. So that's what you're paying for. Titans about to shock the NFL. And you guys, Toronto Gears, you guys told me that. You guys told me in the last one. This trade doesn't work in Madden. That's awesome. That is awesome, Alex. I feel like me and Alex can finally be friends now because this whole, like, A.J. Brown thing is is over. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I still love myself some A.J. Brown, and would I take it back to the Titans? I would in a heartbeat. And, and I know there's a lot going on, but I still wouldn't have traded him, and I wish he was still here. But ultimately, Alex, moderator now, I think we've we've gone a long way, buddy. We've gone a long way. Proud Gorilla says steal. If it wasn't for Snead, the Chiefs don't win the Super Bowl. Good point, Luke. Fulton going to the Chargers helped this deal. Heck yeah, it did. MB, congrats on the moderator and derps. So the Titans are setting themselves up so they can pick the best player on the board. MB, please just, just come back. We'll have a huddle later on in the show. That's our that's our thing. We like to huddle up on this channel. And we got our guy Leon again, super chat. Shout out to Leon. But here's the deal. You got to take a left tackle at number seven. Now, listen, if Fashano and Alder are off the board at seven, do you just draft the third? No. If you don't have him there, you don't do that. You, you try to trade back, but I think at that position, you, you could take the best available. If that's a defensive lineman, you know, maybe you take him there. If that is wide receiver, <sighs> You're still like you're still throwing out Nick Westbrook again. He's only making two million, I think it came out. So it's not like you're paying that guy an awful lot. He's one of those guys too that like, you know, you, you add him to the basketball team and because you, you need players, but then like you realize that you got a chance of getting a stud on the team. Maybe they didn't want to play and whatever, so they're gonna play with you. They're playing Y ball or whatever, so they they're gonna join your team. Hey, you know, Nick, uh, thanks for trying, man. We appreciate you uh, stepping up, but um, we're, we're just going to, you know, you're either going to be on the bench or, you know, you can go join another team at this point. You know, Nick's been around the block two years in a row, everybody, and he can't find another job. So he keeps coming back. And I love Nick Westbrook Akina. He's a really nice player. He's a really nice guy. But you guys know when it comes to the game, Nobody cares if you're nice. You know, I'm one of the nicest YouTubers out there. I'll be honest. I'll be, I'm one of the nicest guys out there. I don't come at any of y'all. Even when you come in here with all this nonsense and you start tearing me down and tearing my network down and running your mouth about this network and running your mouth about me, I don't care. Your opinion, good for you. Now, if you're going to come in and say something ridiculous, um, that's like hate, you know, and all that stuff. You're sure you get banned and, you know, hopefully you figure it out someday. But for the most part, like nice guys don't always win. It comes, it comes to dating. It comes to, you know, even, even like business, you know, there's a lot of nice guys, nice girls, but nice guys who their businesses shut down because they can't make it. doesn't matter how, great their customer services. So again, going off on this tirade here again at pick number seven, you know, like they got, they just, they, they got to take a set. They got to take a tackle. I think that, that that's just my point. I don't know where I was even going with that. Uh, they're going to not, they're going to not have the money to pay him. Uh, I think the new, the new year, um, what, what do we got? EWO says, I think they knew uh, that they needed to let him go. And getting a third out of it is better than just letting him walk. Maybe, but you did franchise. You had a franchise tag. You used it on him. So that that's my only debacle to that point. Oh, about being nice with Nick Westbrook Aquina. So if you got a guy at number seven, a wide receiver, I mean, Nick, Nick can go do whatever, right? I think that's where we're going with that. Nick's, uh, Nick Williams, speaking of, is it this the Nick Williams who's played for the Titans? Says um, he was on the franchise t- tag. The Chiefs needed cap room, so the Titans gave him the best offer, and the Chiefs will still repeat. That's that's what it is with Nick Williams. All right, Jonathan says, scary hours for the AFC South. Titan man, 9,000. Some of the Chiefs fans are rolling in there. Own tears, and I love it. 
MB says we got burned by the Texans with the CJ Stroud pick last year. Now we're taking it out on the Jacks. Now that that is an interesting one, MB, because when it came to Vrabel and Robinson, remember everything was like in house. You never heard about a lot of these rumors, and then eventually it seemed like Vrabel to be the guy that started leaking some of this stuff because obviously the CJ Stroud deal got leaked last year. And there's a lot of truth to that one. So the Texans like, well, we got two. We'll just take Stroud at two and then we'll trade back up at three and get our defensive guy. And that's what ultimately happened. But I think when it comes to the Tennessee Titans, man, I'm telling you, this came out. This was a story. We were talking about this on Tuesday night lights this week. We were going on and on and on. And here was the same clip that we used. Right? Same clip. We were talking about White coming in for the for the Titans, which my son made a great point. Is he still come in? But we were talking about the Sneed deal, which apparently was dead, was back again. And it was back alive. So you're throwing all that out there, and it's like, fine, but where's that other Cinderella team come out of the woodwork and snatch up Sneed and give you a second round pick and pay Sneed twenty one million or even twenty million? Like, a lot of times these things get out there for that very reason. And because of that, the Colts still were like, nah, we're good. We're good. We're the Colts. Come to us to do business. And uh, the Chiefs are like, nah, we'll just, we'll just work with the Titans then. I don't believe Anthony Richardson. Honestly, I think that's definitely debatable. AFC South, no fly zone. Let's go. Uh, Hex, Iffy, 07, what do you think about Pollard and Spears combo? Great comment. Great comment. Um, I think it gives you some versatility within the offense. I got to imagine, man, that they're going to use both these guys at the same time. Like, they got to. And, and when we were breaking down, I think it was like the 33rd something that came out with a the graphic. They were talking about all these new offensive guys and weapons the Titans had. We did a show on that. We broke all that down. The one thing I was kind of going back and forth with was it had both Pollard and Spears on there. Well, they're both running backs. Typically, both running backs don't play at the same time. We've seen Henry play at the same time as Spears. But now we have a totally new offensive coordinator. But honestly, our head coach is going to call our plays in Callahan. So I would imagine he's going to come up with some creative ways to use them. That's just what it's going to be. He's going to find creative ways to use both of them at the same time. So Pollard gives you that other element that, you know, mixed reaction by Cowboy fans. I think some Cowboy fans are like, whatever, go. But remember, the Cowboys, the difference between Dillard and and that situation with Eagles and Cowboys and and Pollard was Pollard was stepping in for, for Zeke. Pollard had so much athleticism, so much burst, so many yards per carry, so many big plays, so many reception yards, touchdowns galore that the Cowboys felt like, why are we going to pay Zeke? Zeke's not getting it done. He's had multiple years to get it done. We'll let Zeke go. We'll bring in Pollard and let Pollard run the show. But I think Pollard, based on his type of back and all that kind of stuff, it never held up as being the true 100% back. I think he was only over 100 yards one time last year. Hexify 07, one time. And we talked about his big runs didn't show up very much like they used to. So he needs a sidekick, but I also think Tajay Spears needs a sidekick. So although they're not the power and they're still going to throw out Chestnut, which whatever, I can't have everybody, right? But I, but I am excited about how they're going to use those because those guys can be very dynamic, especially in the passing game. So we might on one end, which is totally cool. So the Titans have always struggled against the pass, and they've always not been able to pass very well other than A.J. Brown, right? And Hopkins had a great year. Don't get me wrong. 75 receptions, but as a team, very terrible last year when it comes to receptions. Don't get me started. Like, I have this memorized, everybody. I'm not looking at anything. I have memorized, okay? Nothing on my hand, by the way. Nothing on my hand. Nick Westbrook, Kikine, 28 receptions. Kyle Phillips, 15 receptions. Traylon Burks, 16 receptions. Chris, I make one big play a game more, which is not on our team anymore. I think he's on Arizona now. 22 receptions, although a lot of those were deep. My point is, we are talking about guys that, like, uh, for example, we talked about Tyler Boyd. We're like, nah, we're good. Tyler Boyd last year, even in a down year, and not even having Burrow the full year, 
had 67 receptions. 67 receptions. Aconco had 50 receptions. Tajay Spears, I believe, had 50 receptions. Your wide receivers outside of Hopkins, awful. Just awful last year. So you're going to upgrade the passing game. You're going to upgrade the secondary. And now all of a sudden, the Titans going into next year, I'll just be honest with you all. The weakness now is you're not going to be able to stop the run. That's a problem. And on offense, your argument could be, are you going to be able to run the ball? So these are we're going in a totally new world next year. I think you're going to have a better chance running the ball than stopping the run. But Rand still knows. I mean, hey, i got to get myself a middle linebacker other than Kenneth Murray Jr., who, let's just be honest, like isn't very good. Bright side of it is his rookie year was decent, so you're hoping to bring back that productivity. But again, you don't want to use guys out of their skill set. He's good at getting to the passer. Put him in there for him to do that. I think you're paying him a little bit too much. But you need some, you need you need a, a thumper in there. You need a guy who can plug holes, pop people. Al Shair was doing a good job last year to end the year. He didn't do it at the beginning of the year, but towards the end of the year. You let him go, you need someone else who can come in and pop. Okay? It's just the bottom line. You need someone who can come. That that's just the deal. And then you need a sidekick for Simmons. You know? Tier Tart's still out there, maybe. Who knows? Hey, Nick the Fish, what's going on, buddy? Tighten up from Southern California. Again, my cousin, shout out to Chris, uh, my Uncle Barry, those those guys, big Aztec fans, right? San Diego State, they are uh, the fifth seed. They won, uh, was it today or yesterday? Um, they're in the same region as Illinois. But uh, shout out to them. I know they went to the conference tournament where San Diego State, I don't believe, won. They lost to New Mexico, but New Mexico's out now. But shout out to you out in Southern California, Nick. Awesome out there. Hawkins, offensive tackle, first or second round. Then get a front on se- uh, uh, seven on defense right uh, with the rest of the draft. We love the possibility of Cooper on our team uh, for the green dot linebacker. There you go, and I can't wait to break more of these guys down as you mentioned the draft. So, again, you could bring in a draft guy who can provide a spark right away. We've seen that before. We've also seen guys from the draft not provide. Again, it's a great transition. Three dots, boom, boom, boom. If you could help us out and hit that like button, we'd appreciate it. YouTube Shorts makes it a little bit more difficult. If you are watching on X, please come on over to YouTube if you can. Hit that subscribe button. Maybe even hit that like button. Then you go back to X. That's fine. We'd really appreciate the support and having you on the channel. Again, lots of comments. We're over 500 comments. We got three super chats. Leon, super chat. Shout out to Leon. He says, Snood, I just logged on and saw the news. Bet some Colt fans are crying tonight. And then he's got the smiley face underscore Upload, upload. Tighten up to Leon. Appreciate the super chat, buddy. Had one earlier from Stanley. Shout out to Stanley and had one from Christopher Stone. So appreciate the spoils of the super chat here on the network. Let's get to some more of your comments before we break down pro football focus on Sneed. Yes, there's Jeremiah Trotter Jr., I believe, from Clemson. But some of these guys, oh, man, they're supposed to go later in the in the draft. So we'll, we'll have to keep an eye on some of these guys. But again, even if you pick a guy in the fourth round, they still can come in and produce unless they're like the, never mind. I want to even talk about Des right now. Uh, Landon says we got it. Or maybe he was a fifth round pick. Who knows? We got to be uh good. If Levis can pr- produce Landon's right. I mean, Levis is kind of the keys. If Levis sucks and it, it, his four touchdown game was one of those, Hey, uh, winning the lottery moments. And then, The rest of the year, he went four touchdowns for four interceptions. That's more of the standard. Then I guess we're kind of stuck for a little bit. But even quarterbacks who aren't Patrick Mahomes have won, like Trent Dilfer. We can always hang our hat on that, unfortunately, as Titan fans. Um, But, you know, Trent Dilfer had no business being even in the league. And he ended up taking the Ravens to the Super Bowl because of that defense. So, again, you got to have some sort of an elite group. And that's why we're going back with Snead. Again, Snead. If you're just joining us, 2025 third-round pick from the Tennessee Titans going to Kansas City. Kansas City and the Titans would flip-flop seventh-round picks of this year's draft. And the Titans 
barring a physical here, uh, will be bringing in Snead, giving him a new contract, apparently four years for $76 million. It comes out to being a little bit under 19 or right around $19 million a year. He wanted 22. He wanted to be the highest um, average guy in the league, cornerback-wise. I don't think that happened, but I feel like Rand um, was firm. I think Rand was very consistent, and I give Rand a lot of credit for not giving up and consistently going back to the Chiefs and saying, hey, just doing his due diligence and checking up on Snead, and ev eventually it paid off. I think that's a life moment for all of us. Don't quit. Don't stop. Don't just uh, assume it's over. Like, don't be a, a person who's harassing, but at the same time, like, hey, job, for example. Hey, you know, we're not hiring right now. It's We're just not looking to hire at this point. But you know what? Check back in a, a month or two. Maybe we'll reconsider or maybe we'll have an opening. That That's what one of these was. And it, and it worked out. Will Levis is going to be blanking this wild this season. Ten Titans, uh, or Stoner Titan, Tennessee Titans 96, says there it was a dominant edge rusher in the draft. I wouldn't mind taking them, uh, taking, but there isn't. Uh, he plays with fire. Hawkins saying Cooper is arguably the best linebacker in the draft. Jonathan Hernandez says tighten up. A lot of you like, hey, Duncan Idaho, usually been in the channel. This guy. Had one super chat this whole time. He needs to upgrade. What are we talking about? This guy had one super chat this whole time. He needs to upgrade. I, I don't understand what that means, Duncan, but we appreciate you on the channel, buddy. We actually had four super chats, by the way. Dallas Turner stepped up after Will Anderson left. We have a $10 super chat from William. Holy crap. William, shout out Touchdown! to you, buddy. So we got a $10 super chat from William. Again, it says somebody forgot to tell Rand that the Titans are just rebuilding and not contending. Great point, man. Uh, DeMario says Titans got the best out of the contract. In my opinion, uh, 10 Titans says we draft the left tackle. I really believe we can uh, make the playoffs. Adam, this is a modern day rebuild, baby. Titan says Fushanu has better feet, all better pass protector, but Alt can play both the run and the pass. Now, again, it's coming out in the one four five zone. Already done the background work when it came to Alt, and there's a lot of things to like about Alt. And then, and just to do my due diligence, as I said just a few minutes ago, checking with some Notre Dame fans. Again, this is a fan network here, right? This 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 network was created by fans for fans for a very reason only for fans, right? That's what we are, and it's great to have a community to talk sports with all of you guys. But again, I, I think when we look at this modern day rebuild and then we get that, that's a good point. Okay. Because I think when we're talking baseball and stuff like the, the stuff, the Chicago Cubs did 2016, but it started way before that. That's not as easy as you think it is. And, and the white Sox, I'm a white Sox fan They they learned the hard way. They thought they could just redo what the Cubs did and then they would find themselves and they end up winning the division. They never won a playoff series, and now they're rebuilding, and they they traded their best pitcher recently to the Padres. Back to Titan. So when it comes to Fashano and Alt, asking Notre Dame guys, they just love the guy with Alt. Love him. Okay? Fashano, I haven't talked to Penn State yet because I haven't broke down Fashano, but comes to Alt, those are the two names I hear all the time. Alt. Fashano, Alt Fashano, Alt Fashano, Alt Fashano, Alt Fashano. That's all I hear. But those two guys, that's what I'm saying at seven. If those two guys come off the board at, let's say, five and six, team trades up over you and takes one of these guys, and the other guy's gone, I don't know at seven you still go left tackle. I guess that's my point. I just don't want to take a guy who was supposed to go 14th and take him seventh because you got that hole. They say that's never a good idea. And we kind of did that with Corey Davis. You know, he not, Corey wasn't necessarily supposed to go top five, but we had that hole. We needed that receiver. We knew there was going to be a run on receivers with Williams and the fast guy from um, Cincinnati who went to Cincinnati, Ross. So, so we knew the run was coming, 
We just wanted to get ahead of the curve. We tried to, we basically outsmart ourselves. We left a lot of great defensive players on the board by going with Corey Davis. And Corey Davis, I love him. I, I wish him nothing but the best. I'm glad he's come back. I know he had to go through that tragedy with losing his older brother. Um, but the problem with Corey is Corey was drafted five, but he didn't play like number five. Does that make sense? Like he, he never played like number five. A.J. Brown, who we drafted in the second round, played like a guy that we would draft at number five. There's a big difference there. So, again, when it comes to receiver or left tackle, you know, don't just take a guy that's you got to trust your draft board. And, and we don't know much about drafts and ran. Like, Tajay Spears' pick, I didn't like that pick. And now, going back to that draft last year and Will Levis, like, Gosh, Levis in the second round, Tajay Spears in the third round, that that's a pretty big deal. Skronsky, ugh, whatever. He could still turn into a – the problem with him, they never gave him an opportunity to left tackle. That's the problem with him. Another super chat, this one from Titan, $20. Gosh, whoa. Titans, Derek. Holy buckets. What are we doing here? <laughs> Says upload, shout out to Mrs. Amy. For having the vision to rebuild, um, or I'm sorry, for having the the vision to build us a great front office. Thanks for putting in the work, Titan up. Hey, Titan, thanks so much for the comment. And I and I do think I'm hard on Amy sometimes because of the fact like I feel like Amy means well. Amy has done so much for the organization. If it wasn't for Amy. We'd have guys like the the uh, whatever that guy was. Um, if you guys think of the name, I want to say it's Smith, but I could be wrong. It, I thought it was a Smith. Anyways, the guy only cared about um, food related stuff when it came to Titans. You guys know what I'm talking about. And then they the family got him out of there. Like again, I, I would, I'm all for like revamping the Titans concession stand area. It's not the greatest in the world. There's long lines and all that, but we are getting a new stadium. But when Amy came in, Amy, Amy's like enough of this nonsense. Like we want to be a team who can win, compete in the NFL, but we also want to be able to kind of do some fun things in Nashville. So what'd she do? She brought the uniform unveil. She did the whole draft thing. Like if it wasn't for the uniform unveil, we may not get the draft. They realized what a amazing environment it was. And now Amy got you a new stadium and probably eventually at some point a Super Bowl in Nashville. You can't make this stuff up. Those of you that have lived in and around Nashville your entire life, you may not like it now for the fact that it's just blown up over the last, I don't know how many years. I mean, when we were looking to move to Tennessee, we came really close, got a job in Clarksville, had to turn it down. Um, but that would have been like 2012 and like you could get a really nice house for under 200,000. And this is kind of hard now because the market has skyrocketed. So now I'm going to get some people in real estate in the channel. Shout out to you. But honestly, now you look for homes and Clarksville and getting closer to Nashville. I mean, they are just, I, I don't know how people afford that stuff. And how much things have changed since just 2012 in Nashville. It's just booming. It is. They're going to have to figure out the road thing because, you know, they got to figure out, you know, they're obviously throwing in so much downtown. They're going to have to figure out the whole interstates around there, 24 and whatever, because, you know, people are just going to log jam in there. It's a, it's a great route from, like, Chicago to Florida. So, like, there's a lot of people, especially going through 24 or whatever, right by the stadium. So my point is, like, Amy's done all that, though. Amy has been a big part of that. Now, do I agree with Amy firing the GM in the middle of the year? No, because nobody does that. That's just not. And it wasn't like her firing him in the middle of the year had anything to do with getting rain. They could have got ran at the end of the year by firing uh, Robinson. I love division titles. If you, All you got to do is get to the, to the game. You have to get to the big one, right? You got to get in the in the playoffs, okay? If you can't get in the playoffs, there's no need to even talk about it. My point is we were primed to be in the play. I don't know if we would have done anything, but that, that doesn't matter. When teams get in the playoffs, you just never know. So that would be my only argument. But, yes, Amy 
very valuable in this whole thing. Um, putting, getting, going to trust and bringing in Ran. Like again, Ran made a trade. Ran had one draft. Okay, that's where we're at. That's where we're at in all this. I'm more optimistic because we we don't usually get these things. Oh, appreciate it, producer. There it is. The T. It's back. Let's go. Blackheart said we got Sneed. Let's go. Jared says we have the most semi-pro looking uniforms besides the Seahawks. Upload, do you think Vrabel is a bonehead? Oh, did you watch my short on Vrabel? Oh, you got to watch that. It's, it's It was so much fun to make that one uh, with Rand. It, it was really cool. Um, I think I hit some main points on that, uh, that skit. Um, but like I said, what do I think of Vrabel? I liked Vrabel as a head coach. I don't really care what Paul Kaharski thinks about how he treated the press. We have a lot of – Rossi does an amazing job by bringing on, like, all these guys. Teron Davenport. Um, he brought on Sam from A to Z. He's brought on um, Corey Curtis. Shout out to Corey Curtis. I really like listening to Corey Curtis when he comes on the radio and talks with, like, Jared and – uh, maybe even in the morning shows and stuff like that um, with Robbie and Stanley and stuff. Like, the point is, I love our local media guys. I, I think they do a good job. But I, I'm not going to judge the coach. if, Like Bill Belichick, one of the best coaches in NFL history, and there are a lot of people who go to bat for Bill. But my point is, when it comes to Bill Belichick, like, he never treated the media – great at all but he won Super Bowls nobody cares that that's my only point when it comes to Vrabel there were a lot of things I didn't agree with what Vrabel did Vrabel became so towards the end his coordinators destroyed him it was more as you guys said um, hiring just family or ha- hiring it's what it seemed like I know they weren't all family but you know hiring people from the Texans constantly it just got annoying and instead of like making people accountable like Craig Aukerman, the special teams coach shout out to Jared Stillman, by the way, because a lot of people got on Jared. Like that's, that's the thing that drew me eventually to a YouTube channel was like, you see the double standard, you see the hypocrite, you see the flip flopper, you see all those things happen. You know, they're getting on Jared for making such a big deal about Craig Aukerman. And then when Craig Aukerman three years later, finally gets fired, even though three years before, is when Jared actually said he needed to be fired and would rant and rave on the radio and everyone would tell him he's dumb. Then we're like, oh, we change our mind. And we're like, oh, yeah, Craig Aukerman, thank goodness, Vrabel, what a great move by getting rid of him. No, you just said, like, Craig Aukerman didn't matter. And now all of a sudden it's a good thing because they got rid of him. That That's the stuff. That, that goes back to my Colt philosophy. The Colts will be waking up tomorrow. Because remember, they're, most of their Colt fans are ahead by an hour. So it's really like 1244. But yeah, they'll, they'll be like, nah, we didn't want him anyways. The guy's got bad knees. You know, we, 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 we're good. We got Richardson. We're still going to win. Uh, Key West says alt and then seven and Cooper. And then Mason Smith defensive tackle at one Oh six. Can't wait to do the draft. We'll get Brochmo on our draft underscore Brian. My thing was to start doing draft stuff. But then the Titans and Rand Carthon are like, nah, we're good. We're, we're just going to go ahead and do something on a Friday night. Friday night lights, as you guys said. Derp says, Vrabel is more of a meathead than a bonehead. We are last in our division, so we should have a pretty easy schedule. Yes, we do play the Bears. I think the Bears are going to be better this year. Okay. Could you imagine if the Bears, shout out to the Bears, but could you imagine if the Bears obviously are going to take the quarterback for one? Okay. So they're definitely going to take Caleb. And then number nine they have. Well, what receivers falling according to the latest mock drafts? I can see the Bears kind of swooping up and trading with us at seven to take Marvin Harrison Jr. Adding to that receiver group. I mean, the Bears already have a solid defense, bringing bringing in Kevin Byard. So we, we I think we do play the Bears, though. So that's why I'm going off on the Bears. Uh, what else we got here? Um, we got the NFC North. Stevie says, tighten up. Thank you so much. Tighten our defense, our division, Bengals. Oh, oh he's talking about the draft. Um, I'm sorry, the schedule. 
Thank you, Titan. Good, good point. See, that's why I love you guys. So we got Bengals, Bills, Bears, Packers, Vikings, Lions, Pats, Chargers, Jets, Dolphins, Commanders. I can't really just go off the record because I don't know, like, we still have holes. But if I'm looking at that, I think the Bills are going to be severely downgraded this year. The Bengals will be good. Uh, the Bengals will be a lot better because Burrow will be more healthy. So don't let people try to steer you other ways on the on the Bengals. As far as the Packers go, they've they've shown that they're kind of back. So again, Jordan Love had a really good uh, I think playoff push. They should have beat the Niners. Probably could have went to the Super Bowl. They get by the Niners and get by the Lions there at the end. Uh, Bears will be better next year. Vikings are one team that you have to look at is downgraded because they don't have a quarterback. They're going to go with Darnold. I still think if they don't draft someone, that would be a perfect spot for Ryan Tannehill, someone they should have brought in last year instead of Josh Dobbs. Lions are going to be good, obviously. Patriots, I don't think, are going to be very good next year. Chargers are not going to be that good, but they do have a quarterback, but I don't think they're going to be that good. Jets, depends on if Aaron Rodgers you know, comes back. He's older, but Jets had a pretty decent defense. I think the Jets will be okay. Dolphins will be good next year. Commanders are going to be depending on what they do it too, but I don't think they're going to be that great. So what I'm looking at that is Lions, Packers, Bengals, Dolphins for sure. Your division, the Texans twice. Okay, I'll give you one Jacksonville. That's that's seven. That's seven. Very good teams that you're going to face seven seven of them you got 17 total games again Jets could still be good you know Bears will be decent so again I mean, we got a long way to go but but I think when you look at the the schedule next year you would think having the last place schedule last place in the division would be an easier schedule but teams change so fast uh let's see Hawkins says if they got Caleb and Adunze the league's gonna be so sorry Jared says, absolutely do not trade down. We must take alt and keep Levis alive. I agree with you. You say see Joe, Joe Burrow, but people would say, Jared, man, they passed on the organ tackle, right? They passed on him and took Jamar Chase. They ended up going to the Super Bowl and missing out. But the reason why they missed out, Jared would come back to you and say, because they didn't have an offensive line and Burrow didn't have time to throw a wide open Jamar Chase for the game winning touchdown. So that that's can go both ways for sure. Adams has been watching five years. No place I'd rather be to enjoy the ups and downs. Adam, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. Appreciate you so much. I appreciate all you guys in here. Even a Texans guy who just popped in here says Texans are going to win the Super Bowl. Shout out to him. All right, so we got Sneed, let's go. Yes, so the Tennessee Titans just acquired a couple hours ago Sneed from the Chiefs, and they only had to give up a 2025 third-round pick. That's all they had to give up. They didn't have to give up anything else. So, again, just kind of looking at it, I think I can pull it up here. Let's see if I can pull it up. All right, we're going to go screenshots. That's not it. That's not it. So this was the actual thing that Schefter came out with. I mean, that doesn't really tell you much, but whatever. But I do have the somewhere. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, the poll question. How could I forget the poll? We only had 96 votes in the poll? What the heck? That can't be updated. Let's see. Where is the poll at? I don't even see the poll. Poll, like, disappear? Did the poll end? Like, where the heck is the poll at? I don't know. I'm trying to find the poll. Can't find it. If you guys see it, let me know what it's at right now. Last time I checked, there were 96 votes. That was about an hour ago. But anyways, back to this. All right, so I'll screenshot it. I'll try to screenshot it anyways with Sneed. All right, let's put this on the screen. 
All right, Sneed, Sneed, Sneed. There it is. So this one was by Schefter. I know it's going to be hard to, to see, but I'll try to cut it up a little bit. Oops. It ain't going good. There we go. All right. It's kind of hard to see. We'll put it down here in front of you. Okay. So, again, Titans finalizing a trade for Legereus Sneed. Uh, to the Titans, again, the Titans would be giving up a 2025 third-round pick plus swapping seventh-round picks this year and a new contract. Trade is pending and physical, and we, and we got into this a little bit. Um, the physical is a big deal because of the knees. So a lot of people aren't going to talk about that right now because of the excitement, but Titan fans, if – this is really important to you, and you're super excited. We're about ready to break him down for the next hour on Pro Football Focus. But if this is, like, really exciting to you, 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 you got to be kind of crossing the fingers and saying, like, just hope it comes back okay. Um, because it doesn't. I mean, we've all been there, for, for those of us that are older, right? This would be the equivalent of, um, like, for example, we, we uh, recently were going to buy a new house, right? Family of four. We got uh, four kids running around and a dog. We got, um, we love our house, right? I love the upload studios that we got in the basement. But, you know, our house is kind of small a little bit. You know, like, it, it's 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 good, but but it's a little bit small. Like, I got, you know, four bedrooms. Um, two of the kids are going to be sharing a bedroom. Um, and then the older kids got their own room. Um very blessed what we have. It's it's nothing like that, but we had an opportunity to um, expand and, and get a larger house. It needed some work, but but it gave us a lot more real estate, and it was, it was it was a great opportunity. So we went back and forth with the seller. It was on the market forever, and um, we agreed to a price. The problem was the seller said, hey, like, we'll agree to this really low price, but you know, after you do your uh, home inspection, like we're not going to be like covering everything. Okay. We're, we're going to, we're cover some of them, but we're not cover everything. So basically that's what we have. So we said, okay, you know, we went through the house. We thought everything was fine. I mean, whatever. Uh, we had other people go through the house. It seemed okay. It wasn't like, um, you know, a bunch of glory needs. There might've been, you know, every house, no, no house is perfect. But why I'm bringing this up is like, we were so excited I was not excited leaving the studio here, but but I but I would have had a, a massive studio at the new place. Would have been able to do a lot more. But the problem is, like even through that excitement, we still have the home inspection to get through. And I've been through home inspections. Been, I've had a couple houses, right? So you know, I've been through a couple of the processes. I, I know they can get kind of tricky and, and scary at times. The bottom line is a home inspection, there were Tons of problems. Problems galore. There were mold in certain areas he didn't know about. That's a definite red flag. And there was um, just just a bunch of different issues. Like one of the retaining walls needed rework. That was going to cost the fortune. All the windows had issues with them, even though they were beautiful windows. But th they needed a lot. But my point is, again, Sorry to go off the rails here on, on real estate again. I'm telling you, I have real estate people YouTube are going to throw in here. The deal is the whole thing fell through, okay? We were out our home inspection money. That's it. We got our, our deposit back. Seller went on to um, basically relist the house and then eventually sold it. The new people who bought it, we drove by it a few days ago upgraded a lot of the issues that but but they might have had all that wealth and money I, I mean we didn't have that extra money just to do all that stuff so when it comes to Sneed like fingers crossed because this is such a big deal and and it seems like such a great contract and it seems like such a great hey you only had to give up a 2025 third round pick and swap in sevenths for this round that if this falls through because of the physical what a damper that would be that that would make it very difficult for us because then what's the next step? So my son who was just in here a little bit ago, who, who had a really good comment, 
said, hey, what if, what are we doing with Tredavious White? Because he was supposed to come in for a visit, you know, and we still heard he's supposed to come in. And maybe for insurance purposes, Rand still has him come in just in case this kind of falls out and doesn't, the physical doesn't match up. Again, Kansas City doctors can say one thing, but it's going to be Rand's doctors that are going to make the final say. So I don't think many of us are really worried about that, but if you followed this story recently, especially over the past week, the knees have come up so much. Can we finally admit that I was right about Malik Willis being a bust? Jerry, what are you doing? What are you trying to do to this live stream today? Oh my gosh. Now we're going to make it about my, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, I said, I felt like the only Titan fan that knew this was a waste of pick the heat. I got caught on this bust. Okay. I'm not going to go off on the Malik Willis. I will say this. I really like Malik as a person, as a football player, as a quarterback. Uh, I, I like, I feel like there are some packages that he would excel in. I do not feel that we can judge him judge him differently than we judge Will Levis. If we say Will Levis, just think of how good he could be with an offensive line, then I think we need to say the same thing with Malik Willis. I do not think this is going to be a quarterback debate. The question would become who is going is is Malik Willis going to make the roster next year and do you have an opportunity to upgrade at that position because Malik has a lot of upside you know yes he has the athleticism but a lot of people don't realize he has a lot of arm strength and the, the only thing I would say Jerry is I'm going to ask you a question that's what we do on this channel okay I don't come at you on on an opinion I mean some of you come at me that's fine but, but I'm going to ask you a question, Jerry. Do you believe that Mike Vrabel believed in Malik Willis to a certain degree of allowing him and trusting him to play the game how Malik wanted to play? And if the answer is no, I don't think he trusted him, and no, I don't think he let him play the way he wanted to play, then my my thing to you, Jerry, is, what would it be like for you to do a job where you knew you could do something very, very well, but your boss wouldn't let you do it, and your boss made you do it a certain way, and you weren't comfortable doing that way, and ultimately it made your performance not very good? And the only reason I say this is they let Will Levis zip the ball down the field. They would not let they would not let Malik Willis do that. They allowed him to throw the ball 10 times against the Chiefs. And they only allowed him to throw it a couple times at the end of the game because they were down and the Chiefs scored and it was their last hurrah. So that that is just my argument when it comes to Malik. Like, do I think Malik could start for the Titans next year over Will Levis? No. Do I think Malik can even start over uh, Rudolph at this point? No, probably not at this point, but I think he deserves another preseason. I think he deserves another training camp to make that decision. And by the way, if he is a bus, Jerry, then what is he hurting by at least being on the, the initial roster preseason and training camp? Like, I don't think he hurts. If anything, he has an okay performance in preseason and someone trades and maybe you get a pick back for him, right? But, you know, I appreciate the comment. And I also appreciate the comment about the Texans winning the Super Bowl again. How about that? I forgot Tannehill existed. Hawkins says, I just wonder who's trading down um, with the top six picks because they'll change everything on who we who, who is dealt, who we dealt uh, let's see. Ten, Tank Life says Belichick, no job without Tom. Tom has another ring without him, so is he a great coach? Kind of felt the same way, Tank. But then you hear a lot of players come back and they basically say that Bill Belichick was a lot of the reasons that allowed Tom to become Tom. And then when Tom was good at the end, right, Tom didn't need Bill and was able to go win another Super Bowl. 
I, I think that's their argument. Sign some good players, Tank. That's what our Texans fan says in the house. How about them Broncos? How about them? How about them? Uh, Hawkins, Johnson. But they haven't been as far as a group or as a coaching staff. Derp says the Bengals picked Jamar Chase because he played with Burrow. Blackheart says tighten up. Good night, upload. It's past my bedtime. Good night, Alex. Uh, we got Shrek in the house. He says, wow, the Titans making some moves is what? But but for what? They suck, says uh, <laughs> our Shrek guy. Jared says, maybe if it wasn't in shorts live, I could find the ball. Great point, Jared. Great point. And I know. I hear you. I hear you, man. Luke says, I can't wait uh, to get that Sneed jersey. Man, you know, I just got a Derrick. I, I had to. I got a, I just got a Derrick Henry it's one of those middle of the road uniforms. Like it's an Oilers one, but it was like 70 bucks discounted. Ryan Tannehill still not discounted on the, on the NFL shop. So I, I don't understand what the heck they're doing, but it was, it was cool because it came in today and it's just like Derek, like Derek's like one of those guys like McNair and Eddie George and Chris Johnson. We shout out to him for getting into the Tennessee hall of fame or whatever, but it's one of those things. So um, just to have it, I thought, hey, 70 bucks, not, not, and it's actually a pretty cool jersey, so I like it. Leon says, never saw the pole. Yeah, it must have disappeared. Rand's master class. Uh, Pig Winkle, Wickle says, tighten up. John says, Awuzie and Sneed on the outside, that's tough. It is. It definitely is. Derp says, the Titans bought the largest group of Alabama. Oh, yeah, Alabama's Pro Days. Maybe they do like themselves some Kool-Aid. It says, Jory Hardy, get your popcorn ready. Sneed versus Ridley. Yes, training camp. Let's go. Bruce says, listen, we got Sneed, baby. Come on with this upload. This is a fixer-upper. Let's talk about some Sneed. All right, Bruce, let's go. I think that's what we need to do. We need to get fired up, and we need to pull it up, and we need to let's go. So here we go. Pro football focus, we're bringing it. We want to give you uh, the best we can since we didn't really watch the Chiefs a whole lot except for in the playoffs. So here we go. I have a lot of this stuff memorized anyways, but uh, and I already shared it, but we'll, we'll kind of go for it. So Sneed right now, 6'1", 192 from Louisiana Tech, was a Bulldog. Go Bulldogs. Draft year was 2020, fourth round, 138 selection. So from that, you gave up a third rounder. Chiefs net one round for the pick, right? But I think it's such a difficult situation. Again, thanks for the thumbs down. There are, speaking of the thumbs down, there are three dots in the upper right because short's live. Again, whatever. It's what YouTube wants. They're pushing it. If you hit that, it will unlock the like button. I'm trying to get 200 likes before we end the night. We're going to go a while, so I've still got a voice, and we still want to talk Titans. So I, I get it. This isn't. This is out of my element. Usually I got a bunch of notes. Usually I got a bunch of graphics, and we got all the stuff going on, but feel like we already did the background work when it came to sneak. We already did that show on Tuesday night. Going back, I thought that was a great show, by the way. The Tuesday night light show with the green and, and the black and the green. I thought that was really cool. Um, but, yeah, anyways, back to sneak. So, let's talk about him. Overall grade score, 71.1 this year. Run defense, 70.7. Pass rush, 63.3. Overall coverage grade, 71.9. So, based off those stats, there's some things to think and keep in mind. When it talks about luxurious need, number one, how many times, and we'll find this out for you, are teams throwing his way? I think that means more. You know, like, for example, Dion may have only faced one pass a game. So, like, how can we judge Dion if he's only being targeted one time a game? So that that's number one. Um, number two, when when quarterbacks do throw his way, how effective are they? And this is where this stat comes in. I already shared the stat, but I'll share it one more time. So if a quarterback was throwing his direction this past year, 2023, their passer rating would be a 55. Now it's a 55.9, but we'll drop the 9.9. We'll just keep it a 55. Do you realize how good that is? You aren't getting that in any free agent corner possible. Wouzier can't do that. Uh, Fuller can't do that. Um, none of those free agent guys that we went through. Steven Nelson, none of those guys can do what Snead did. But again, going back to what I said was, 
you don't want to trade a first round pick though. Do you, when you need a left tackle, like you just picked up a Uzi, do you need another corner and you would rather go in the air with a non qualified left tackle? I didn't want to give up a second round pick. I didn't want to give up a first round pick next year because I felt like we were rebuilding. You guys say modern. But now that I know we only had to give up a 2025 third round pick and we're swapping sevens and we have mo- like room for, for cap and bringing him in and giving him some money, we, we gave him money. But you realize we gave Calvin Ridley more money for, for 92. This guy's getting four for 76. So that that's a plus in, in, in Rand's camp. Rand got both of them for you. The deal, the rumor was the Titans, supposedly the Titans, which we kind of know what is the Titans. The Titans supposedly offered four million or four years, 80 million. So four years, 80 million was before Calvin Ridley. So then that doesn't happen. Sneed says no, according to the Chiefs. And then Calvin Ridley comes out and we sign him to that deal. If I could have told you before we signed Ridley that I could give you Ridley and Sneed, would you think Rand could have pulled that off? Honestly, do you think he could have? Because he just did. He just did that. So, again, yards per reception under 10 yards. That, that's a solid place to be. Again, I don't believe Awuzie has that. Fuller did. Uh, I can't, I'd have to get back to you on Steven Nelson, okay, on that as well. So let's break him down even further, and we'll get to your comments. So I already shared this. One of his worst games was week one against the Lions. Another very poor performance was week eight against Denver. It was a 44.5. He had a really rough patch. So at Denver week eight, week nine at home against Miami, 44.5 in week eight, 49.0. His coverage his coverage scores in those two games, 41.3 and a 47.7. If you look at all these games, they're not as great as you would think. Okay? And, again, going back to Tuesday night, so glad we did that show on Sneed because I feel like I'm a lot better off going into this signing him. But the one thing I said was, you know, I, I don't see a lot of blue. Blue is a great thing on pro football focus. Green is, is great. Green and blue. Um, aqua, great, right? Yellow, orange, red, not good. I see some red. The red is good because it's only in the tackling part. We're not signing him because he's a great tackler. There is a lot of orange. There's a lot of yellow. You guys said in the chat, you said upload. Did you watch his playoff performance? Luke, also, our buddy Luke, he was dominant. Luke went as far as saying the Titans or the Chiefs didn't have Sneed. They wouldn't have won the Super Bowl. Now that's tough. That's a tough comment because Patrick Mahomes is sitting there. So you got to really, really admire Luke for putting that out there because a lot of people wouldn't go that far. Luke did. Luke's like literally watched him play, not not buying the uh, that he you know those stats. Now, when you look at his stats overall, okay, 2023, 2022, 2021, 2020. Again, overall defensive score 71 in 2023. 76 in 2022, 2021, 64, and in 2020's rookie season, the 72.9. So his best season, according to Pro Football Focus, would have came in 2022. His coverage score was 74 that year. He never had a 74 in any of his other four years. But, again, when you're talking about snap counts, only one season over 1,000, but he did have two seasons of 989 and 918 can't really count a lot on his rookie year now targets this is this is a very interesting fact so how many times was he targeted I think this is where we want to go I gotta get some tea man it's midnight you know we're still going though no stop until we have no people in here okay no stop until we have no people in here so let's let's break this down how many times did teams throw his way 
I'm shocked on this. We'll start you off slow. Rookie year. Okay? Rookie year, based on snaps 410, people targeted and threw it his way 45 times. Of those 45, he, he gave up 25 or 28 receptions, 62%. It's not bad. Rookie year, I'd take that. I mean, you. what we'll do, if we'll have some fun, is we'll, uh, we'll look up Avery. Because Avery was our fourth corner. And then we'll look up Christian Fulton, who was our one. So I think that's fair to compare. Okay? That's why when we brought in a woozy, I'm like, well, what are we comparing them to? Because if we're just comparing them to other free agents, maybe I would have took Fuller. But if we're comparing them to former Titans who were on the team last year, Roger McCreary was your best Titans corner with a with a score of 72. But I think by the eye test, we all would say that was definitely true. We all thought Fulton was terrible. I mean, Fulton was brutal. Fulton alone cost us the Saints game in week one. So you needed to upgrade your corner spot, and Rand, Rand listened, and he, and he did that. All right. 2021. Second year in the league. Okay? Did I hit something wrong? I'm sorry. I don't even think that's in there. Is that good? Oh, we're good. Okay. So 2021. Targets. 90. So they went up. They doubled. 45 in rookie year to 90. Gave up 67 receptions. for a, uh, the, the average reception rate would have been 74%. Now, that's bad. That's not very good. So that's basically saying three out of every f- uh, four throws going his way are going to be caught. So that that can't be great. But yards per reception wasn't terrible, 10.5. So they weren't like their first downs, but, again, they're, they're not that bad. His rookie year, 7.6, was actually phenomenal. Next year, 2022, which I think was his best year, 106 targets. So teams were still throwing it his way. Right? Awuzie on the other end, he did not have nearly as many targets thrown his way. We were talking about maybe four passes a game. So this guy, 106, that's a lot more. 68.9 completion percentage. I guess that's not, I mean, amazing by any, I mean, that, that's not great. But uh, as far as yards per reception, was only nine yards. So that's pretty solid. That's better than a yard and a half from the previous year. But let's talk about last year. All this color on the, the the grading scale. A lot of orange, a lot of yellow, which is telling me maybe he's not as good as we think, right? But I'll leave you with this, okay? 81 targets. Targets way down. 106 to 81. Completion percentage. I already talked about the pass rating, 55, which is awful, Right? So that's good for him. Quarterbacks, terrible. The saying the quarterbacks performed at their worst throwing in his direction. How many of those passes he complete of the 81? 51%. 51% and under 10 yards per reception. That is why you're paying this guy. That is a trait of a number one guy because he's going against the elite guys. He is going against the elite guys. You know, Christian Fulton, to be fair, maybe he would have been a better third or fourth option for the Titans. Maybe it's fair to say Roger McCrary may have been the best corner last year, but he wasn't going against the best guys. But the bottom line, push come to shove, this guy that we just picked up via trade, hopefully the physical passes up, passes good. He's experienced. As Luke said, he's got that playoff factor going for him. We shut down opponents. This, as long as the knees are fine, and maybe he has to have surgery. But with a meniscus, he should be ready to go at the beginning of the year, right? So that's kind of where we're at. So what are your thoughts on that? Let's get to your comments. Again, there's three dots, boom, boom, boom. Help us get to 200 likes. We appreciate you. Uh, we're at 159 right now. Holmes in the house. Shout out to you, buddy. Holmes has been here for a long time. He says, yes, sir. You guys have a great tandem. Kenan, uh, Kenan E.M. Lick, L-I-K, says, hi, what's up? Got the little uh, revolutionary hat going on from the Revolutionary War. That's awesome. Jared says, Fulton barely even tried, so it's obvious he wasn't. Oh, my gosh. 
Everyone stay blessed. Hey, good night, Titan. And thanks again for the super chat, buddy. Uh, moving on. Uh, we got uh, Fiera Brothers. As I meant, uh, do you like the Titan? I do, buddy. I like them. Hopefully you hit that subscribe button, bud. Now Roger can play his natural position. I like that. Luke's right. Um, name a car for an edit. Name a car? Uh, let's go Toyota Camry. Let's go. Take that, Addy Slay. I uh, wonder which teams are using the AI to predict the opponent play calls. Uh, hit that midnight T. Hit that like button to 200. I appreciate you, Leon. Thanks again for being a member. He says, we get, oh my gosh. So Leon's giving you guys a, an opportunity here. Perfect right around the draft, by the way, because I got two guys ready to go. Obviously, Alt from Notre Dame's ready to go. And then my other guy ready to go is the cornerback from Alabama, Kool-Aid. Because I think at 38, we had a chance. I didn't know we were going to make this trade, though. I didn't know we were going to make it happen right now. But Leon's throwing it out there. Hey, you get to 200 likes, he's giving out five free memberships. So, appreciate Leon. But, unfortunately, Leon's not going to be here all night long. So, if you're going to make that happen, you're going to have to help us out. Again, three dots, boom, boom, boom. If you see that subscribe button, obviously hit that. Boop, there it is. Um, and then hit that, the three buttons, and then the, the like button should pop up. Again, I, I should do an edit where I have to say that, but I know it's frustrating sometimes. Jay says, LOL, hope you got a lot of tea because I just made it. All right, Jay Bryant, what's up? Holmes, I agree with you. End of the year last year, he was showing a lot of improvement. There's Leon. Adam, it's maybe the best groups of free agents ever signed by the Titans. Holmes says Awuzie had a down year last season because he was coming off an injury in ACL. Watch him take off this season and have a great year. Holmes would know. Holmes would know being a Bengals guy. Again, that's why, again, I do not get on guys coming in this channel from opposing teams. Holmes has been through a lot of watch parties. Um, again, I would say me being the least active on the channel over the last couple of years with everything going on, like guys like Holmes are constantly, and Luke as well, like so many of you guys that would always come in and support a watch party. Even if I was trying one like for the Bills and the Chiefs on a Monday night or something like that, like you guys would show up. And, and a lot of you would love still to talk Titans, and we would. But my point is like having you guys come in and giving your feedback on the, uh, the the team you love helps me understand the team way more than me going online and listening to other people like in local or even the national media, especially national, because we know the national media has their darlings and then they have their other teams that they don't really put too much time into. Water says, say it. Nice car, man. Appreciate it. Uh, your admins must mute this clown. All right. Well, we'll say I, I said it. He should stop, right? The, the car guy. We got to get more admins in here. 615 says, how are you excited? Are you for Spears? I am, man. I'm excited for him. Out of all the Titans, Wesco, we, we have to put him to side. But, but out of all the Titans, we got the, the field passes this year from the Titans. So we got to go in the Atlanta game. Okay. So that would have been Will Levis's debut. We were there. We had the field passes. Of course, you know, when the game starts, they kick you out of there. But during the during the field pass section, we were on it was Oilers weekend. We were on the right side of the Titans sideline. So we're on the right side. Titans run out the left side. And then across the field, obviously, is the opponent. They got two other stations for fans. So a couple people kind of ticked me off. Rand was one of them. I'm not going to lie to you. Rand kind of made me mad because Rand came to the middle of the sideline. And there were a group of us sitting over there. And, you know, that's kind of like, I get it. You're, you're going to be playing a game. But at the end of the day, like, Rand's in one of those positions where he doesn't have to game prep. <laughs> he doesn't have to, like, pump himself up before the game. Like, he does all his work throughout the week and obviously in the in the preseason getting the team ready and he does all his work uh, scouting and, and all that, sure. But for game day, like, he's there to see what his product is. And I thought Rand could have came over and said hi to us. It wasn't that hard for him to do. He didn't. He just stayed at midfield and 
talk to Eddie George and, and stuff like that. I get it. He gets a pass because he was talking to Eddie. But, again, being on that sideline, seeing some players go by, there was one especially, okay, and that was Tajay Spears that came over and he got pictures with us. He made sure all my kids got a picture. He made sure all my kids got a signature. Dude was amazing. And he did that with multiple people on that side where no one else was showing us any love. They're all on the other side because that's where all the Oilers were, right? Wesco was not. We had to call Wesco over, and Wesco did. Wesco signed, and Wesco was nice. He wasn't smiling about it. He probably heard what I said about him on the watch parties, but that's fine. But it, he did that. But Traylon Burks, Traylon Burks ran right by us twice and didn't even look our way. Sorry, Traylon. I had Falcon fans. I'm sorry. Falcon players that were mingling with us more than, I mean, way nicer than you were. You didn't even look at us. So, yeah, Traylon Burks, whatever. But, again, back to your original question with Tajay Spears. Yeah, I, I like Tajay Spears. Uh, let's see. Uh, WXRLD says, I was uh, butthurt we didn't get Chase Young. This is way better. I, I was, too. I just I didn't know about the neck. I don't know. Did you know about the neck? I didn't know about the neck. I think that changed a little bit. Rick, who do we? Hey, shout out to Rick. Rick says, who do we go after at 7 and 38? Well, I've been through this, Rick. Um, you got to go left tackle at 7. 38, though, I think, I think it's open. It's open for discussion. Best player available? I, th- I think it's all open for discussion, my man. But the wide receiver possibility? The more I read about kool I think he'll go in the first round. But, man, if he was sitting there, I mean, you could bolster up the defensive line. Big Jeff needs a buddy. Um, I guess you could even go tackle again at 38. It wouldn't be more popular, but you could have an opportunity more to solidify your right tackle, left tackle, and your line for years to come. I mean, you would have Cushionberry for the next four or five years, and then you got your left tackles, Skaronsky. You know, I mean, these guys would be around for a while. Uh, Andrew said, I've been a Titans fan for five years now. May I say I am hyped for the future? I tell you what, man, you've, you've picked a great time to be a Titans fan. I know they kind of let you down over the last year and a half, but it looks like they're getting back on the track, and that's what we want. Twins in the house. Boom, boom with the Twins. Shout out to Twins. Big O Titan, there's my guy. He says, uh, uh, late night upload. Just when you think it was safe to grab some sleep, tighten up. I feel the same way. I just put something out there, 8 o'clock-ish, maybe, central time, about um, vidIQ came out, and they're like, hey, as a content creator, it's very important that you take some time to yourself, right? Like, my time to myself goes to family time. I mean, that's just what I do, right? So, like, tonight, it, it was great to catch up with the kids. Um, I get it. Mr. Producer, he's all about the new Madden update, so shout-out to him. He did make the travel basketball team, by the way, so shout-out to him for that. I know some of you were asking. But, but again, like, it is important to have that time. You guys were asking my favorite March Madness team. It's Illinois by far, 2005 Illini team. That was, that was, they should have won the national title over Carolina. I'm sorry, but they should have. And it uh, didn't happen. They let May run all over us, burrow us over with his physicality. And Augustine, they, they had him fall out in the first half. So it was tough to compete. We did make it a game. We came back. We fought back. We, we were down double digits. We come back to tie it. We just couldn't hit the big shot at the end. And we ended up, uh, Marvin Williams hit a three and we ended up losing. But, but again, I going back to your original point, you know, I again, I just I don't know. It, it, it's a late night. Uh, you know, again, Illinois is, is my team, but having that sleep, I'm going back to Big O Titan here. Having not sleep, I'm sorry, you throw me off, but having that time to yourself and you know, I you do a lot of prep work here, you know, like it, graphics, they take time and 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 setting up like this. I'm really excited about the draft. So like starting to now zero in plus having a full-time job and being a full-time dad and being a full-time husband 
it's tough. It's not easy. So Ran definitely not making it easy by coming out at nine o'clock at night and shocking the world. Again, we had a we had a basically somebody threw this out. We even have the former president of the house asking us if it's Ice Spice or Tupac. Former president in the house. I don't I don't think he's on YouTube. Is he? He's on that other whatever that is. Um, I'm not gonna speak politics, my man. Um, Mohammed, I'm not gonna speak politics, even though I just put the uh, former president on there. But uh this is a sports channel. We try to stick to sports. Obviously, we're moving on to real estate. So, but uh, I appreciate you stopping by. I do. Uh, Leon says, future looks bright, brand new season, brand new coaching staff. Leon also challenged you guys, by the way. He says, if you could get 200 likes to give away five free memberships, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. He says, we only need 30 more likes. We're at uh, 168. D Brown was balling. Hey, there we go. First class Kings. You're right. D Brown, Darren Williams. Oh my God. That team was amazing. Love that team. I get it. They lost to Ohio State by a buzzer beater to end the Big Ten season, but they were legit. Blackheart says, I live in Tennessee. I like all the Tennessee teams except for the NBA. I like the Pistons. Well, Jalen Duran or Duran uh, from the Pistons. So shout out to uh, Blackheart. Bulls guy. Love uh, myself some mayo or Io Dusumu. But, no, I'm a Bulls guy. Um I was kind of born and raised with that. I wasn't born in Chicago. I was born in Houston. Should be a Rockets fan. But I didn't really – my dad wasn't a big basketball guy growing up as a kid. Uh, he did get into the Bulls when we moved back to Illinois. But, um, yeah, when we were in Texas, it was Oilers. So then, obviously, you know, the transition to why am I a Titans fan is because I was an Oilers fan. McGrady Prod says, mark my words, Titans win the division at 10-7. and 7. That is crazy, my friend, but I hope you're right. I hope you're right. Grand Canyon loops are moving on. Are they really? Who did they upset? See, I caught that. A lot of people wouldn't catch that, man. I caught that. Where where are we at? Now I got to look. Now I got to look at my March Madness scores. So here we go. I'll give them to you Why, since you're here. Northwestern won, wins in overtime, 77-65 over Florida Atlantic. Colgate gets destroyed by Baylor. San Diego State, shout out to my cousin, Aztec, 69-65 over UAB. Marquette pounds up Western Kentucky. Clemson beats up New Mexico. UConn destroys Stetson. I think that's in Florida, by the way. Yale upsets Auburn. McCrary not happy right now, but he is happy about himself getting some sneak. Colorado, Dion's happy, 102-100 over Florida. Tim Tebow not happy. Texas A&M beats Nebraska by 15. Vermont gets beat up by Duke. Purdue throws up uh, Grambling. Alabama beats Charleston. Houston destroys Longwood. Ken Moore happy. James Madison takes out Wisconsin 72-61. And Utah beats TCU. And Grand Canyon, yeah, that's correct. Grand Canyon upsets upsets St. Mary's. So shout out to whoever put that in the chat, but I caught it. I caught it. And uh, there's your update. Squares up says, which second round wide receivers you like? I mean, to be fair, like there are some fast guys and I, and I think deep vertical threat guys are going to be available at pick 38. But my question to you is based on how this team is, we take the left tackle at seven. Now we get sneed for the corner. I mean, ultimately, where you want to go. I, I think the major issues with this Titans team next year is middle linebacker and defensive line. And Simmons is fine. Landry's going to be better coming off the ACL after uh, two years ago. But this this team built on how Rand's got him right now is not going to be able to stop a team who can run the football. We might be able to stop you if you throw it, but if you run it, we're going to struggle with you. So if this team played the 2019 Tennessee Titans and Derrick Henry in his prime, they would probably struggle beating that team based on how this is constructed. So 
Rand's got some work to do. Rand's got some work to do. But adding to your cornerback position, still need a safety. Like, he's making his job, you know, he's doing his work. And this is huge. This isn't just like some guy off the street. This, I'm mean, no offense to Tredavious White, but this isn't like Tredavious White coming in from a visit after he was released by the Bills. Like, this is a big deal. And um, to get him for just a 2025 third round pick, swapping sevens this year, and still getting him under for what he wanted, he wanted 22 a year, he's getting about 19. That is, that is, that is a big deal. So, shout out to Rand. But but he's still got more to do. And but I'm excited. This is definitely got to open a lot of eyes around the league. And you know, like this isn't easy to do. If it was easy to do, everybody would have done this. The Colts would have done this already. So I give the guy a lot of credit. Lone Star Titan legs from South Carolina would be great. And the second, uh, Michael Jordan is the goat. I agree. Uh, Burton from Alabama. He's a burner. Says Luke. JS75, crazy Kentucky lost to Oakland. That one guy from Oakland went off. They said that guy had zero stars in recruitment. Oh, my gosh. Jay Bryant says 49ers found Fred Warner um, and Green Law late in the draft. Maybe we can. I mean, we found – I know he's not to that status, but, I mean, I really like David Long Jr. I know he never could stay healthy, but, man, that guy could tackle. You know, he, he was – undersized but unlike brewer like you couldn't tell he was undersized the way he played upload you and your son the producer do a fine job giving us fans an open form of talking football for the titans fans and other teams grateful for you guys hey Holmes, i appreciate it you know it's guys like you that help me keep going you know because there's a lot out there you know when we started in 2019 there was a few people out there i mean there there was there was a few and you know my people I admire getting into this was Titans tube. And um, that was kind of cool to be on Titans tube and, and giving my predictions. So again, I don't, that's what it's about. Um, but now it's, you know, chat sports got thousands of pages trying to take over the entire universe. And they do tick me off because there's so many rumors that they throw out there anybody gets released they make a video oh, come to the titans and it, it's just like you know we're all on will levis and then they're making a video on just all these quarterbacks coming to tennessee and it's just like you know and it, it's it is what it is but it kind of ticks me off sometimes but like i said the community for titans i mean the titans to be honest probably have more youtubers than any other team I think we can all agree on it. I think, and there's some great talent. You know, the, the problem is it's just what YouTube pushes out. So, thankfully, starting in 2019, like uh, ahead of the whole sickness year, when everyone was kind of in their homes and stuff, like that definitely helps the channel for sure. Um, but there's a lot of great guys out there uh, that just, you know, they're, they're doing the work. They're, they're putting a lot of time into, but YouTube's just not pushing them out that much. So, like I said, we always support, always been like that for a channel. I mean, I think I can honestly say this. Um, again, like fans and fans and, 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 you know, again, I'm a fan. You guys are fans. That's super important to me. But, like, if you go back to 2019, like, having all those guys on, Tennessee Titans Weekly, that, like, it, it, was, it was awesome. And no one's ever done that before. And NGB talking myself, like, that was important to us. We were like, we got to have all these guys on and, and, and talk and break this thing down. And I do wish there was more of that. Um, Rossi, like I said, Titans Rossi does a fabulous job bringing all those people in um, as well. Like, he'll bring in guys all the time. Um, sick podcast. He brought those guys in multiple times. Um, he, he's just, he's like I said, Rossi does a great job. All, of, all the guys do a great job. But, like, the communicating with – everybody as a whole like we're this is our team right like that that's important so we are 30 likes away from the free membership thing if that interests any of you I don't know if it does uh Leon says how would you grade Rand based on the free agency moves my confidence in him has increased quite a bit since they the day they fired Vrabel 
again, I don't. It's just the last year was kind of like I, I again I understand the point when when we bring up last year, but we I think we also realized that Rand didn't have a lot to work with. He didn't have a, a cap. He he didn't have you know it's necessarily the players. And he didn't have an offensive line. I mean, he was really limited. So it was amazing Rand got the job, and I'm sure Rand was super excited, but Rand probably looked at that night he got the job and getting comfortable at his new office and was like, man, where do I start, right? And you got Vrabel on top of you, and he's doing his thing, and it's like, yeah, what do I do? So Rand goes out and brings a guy called Andre Dillard. And... I think a lot of people really like that move. I, I didn't, but I don't hold that against Rain. Does that make sense? Like, I'm still blaming, in that case, I'm blaming the old regime. Not blaming Rain. Rain had very limited. He was trying to go through free agency last year with, like, his hands behind his back. It was very difficult for Rain, And he tried to plug the best he could. And he, I mean, we're having to sit and think and hope and pray at the end for like guys like Chris Hubbard to come in here or the one dude from the freaking Cardinals. Can't even remember that guy's name to come in here and fill that tackle spot. And ultimately Chris Hubbard ended up being the guy and he did okay. I think he ended up getting hurt, but I can't hold that all against Rand. Rand's draft class though is Dare I say somewhat okay. I mean, he for his draft picks, I he did a even though I was against Tajay Spears right away, I was like, why do we need another running back who's coming off an injury and in, in the third round when he had so many other holes to fill, especially wide receiver, some of those other things, offensive line. But Rand knew it was a process. And I think a lot of us forget that. We forget that. It's a process. It's not that easy. Jake says Titans tube is the OG of the triple OG of the Titans content. Jake 24 tight. And that's the other thing. A lot of people in here that would have never been in here. If we did not reach out and and have these guys or be on these guys' show. Now I know we tried to get Titans tube on here many, many times and didn't work out with the schedules and stuff, but I remember being on there for the picks. That was fun. Crazy people bringing up Sneed's knees. Funny saying, (laughs) Uh, now, 15, 16, 17 games in his career, he's missed max of two. But now that he's with us, the knees are done. Now, to be fair, Connor, I love your icon. That kind of started before. Um, kind of started this week more than anything because Kansas City Radio put it out there and basically said, dude, like, Sneed should take the Kansas City deal because realistically he should take the money because his knees are bad. I don't know where that came from. Obviously, it did not come from Sneed's King. We've been through the process with how Vrabel likes to leak things through Rossini, now from The Athletic. People like to float things out to get an advantage. That's why I get on some of you when you come back from the combine, and I've said this a million times, it's like, oh, they keep talking about wide receiver. We're going to draft wide receiver. Callahan talk wide receiver. Uh, You know, Brian, Brian Callahan. Bill Callahan, heck, even Bo Callahan talking about wide receiver. And then you got Rand talking about wide receiver. Wide receiver is going to happen at seven. I'm like, no, no. If anything, wide receiver is not going to happen at seven now because they are floating out that narrative for a reason. That's my point. So, again, taking the left tackle. We're going to mark that down as as long as they're there. They got to be there, right? Jay Bryan says that's the good old days when Titans weekly and Titans and Truth and Titan Upload got together. Well, we'll get them back on here eventually. You know, it's hard, though, to have those guys on when I'm not relevant anymore. You know, the last couple years, I haven't been as active. I mean, mean, during watch parties, it's it's just not a good idea to have people on during a watch party because you guys know I go crazy. I go nuts and start getting into these things and stuff. So it's hard to have a guest on. But when we did the pregame shows and – Post game shows and we're so active. You know, we were so active. That was the best time to have people on. And um, speaking of which, we'll be back on the Bleacher Report in a couple weeks, April 8th. So we're pumped about that opportunity. 
And then the second night of the draft, that Friday night, I guess they invited us to hang out with the AFC South crew on the Bleacher Report. So we're, we're super thrilled that uh, they're thinking of us. I know they're working with Tennessee Titans weekly, too, and they do a great job. So, again, Titans for true – Titans for – I'm sorry. Titans in truth, Chris. Um, we'll have to get him on soon, too, because we, we miss him. Project – Project. Uh, I do think we are forgetting about the absolute cannon Levis has and the competitive spirit he ha- is there as well. And I and I I agree. I think that competitive spirit can hurt him too by getting him hurt by taking unnecessary risk. We've seen him. Pittsburgh game, prime example. Pittsburgh game. He played really well. It's his second game. It's the game after Atlanta. It's a short week, Thursday night football. I didn't think we had a chance against Pittsburgh. And here he is moving us and, and making plays and zipping it down the field. Two things happened to him. One, he made a bad choice to end the game. He made a bad choice. He went towards Burks, ends up getting Burks knocked out. Um, Burks was on the sideline in his head. He went deep. It was a fourth and five. He flings it deep. He had Tajay Spears wide open in the flat. And Tajay would have caught that and ran 20 yards and out of bounds and would have been field goal range, would have won the game. It was that one moment, that one play, and he didn't make it. But he was a rookie. So rookies need time. They need to play in this case, right? I know that the debate is, hey, Mahomes didn't play his rookie year. But my point is you need to go through those growing pains. You need to go through those processes. Mahomes also didn't win Super Bowls his first year either, right? He kept running into Brady and some of that. But – but again, the second issue, which is the, the larger issue of the two, Vrabel, and some of you, uh, i got to count to 10. I mean, it gets me fired up still. True fan, right? True fan when you're getting fired up about old crap. Whew. Tim Kelly. All right, I said it. Tim Kelly and Vrabel decided... As Will Levis is bringing us out from the one-yard line all the way down on a game-winning drive, Levis gets us out to about midfield. You guys remember the next, right? Reverse to Burks, who's hobbling. Don't get much. I think we got five yards, maybe. Maybe not even five yards. Might have lost it. I can't remember. Next, second and 11, maybe? Second and 10, whatever. Handoff to Derrick Henry. Don't hate that play, but he gets like five yards and that's it. Third and five. You're going to go for it on fourth down. What does Tim Kelly draw up? Hand off to Tajay Spears up the middle. Goes absolutely freaking nowhere. Fourth and five. So you're moving the ball late in that Pittsburgh game. All you need is we were down four. So you needed a touchdown, but still Levis was zinging it all over the place. He's connecting. He was on that game. And Pittsburgh fans will tell you, Will Levis, they saw something in him that night. They thought he was heck of a quarterback. That tells me a lot. Pittsburgh is tough on their quarterbacks, tough on their team. Heck, they're tough on Tomlin, who hasn't had a losing season in his career. But here's the thing. Once we got to about midfield, they took the ball out of Levis's hands. That is the bigger issue. Even larger than him throwing it deep, on a fourth and five, trying to make a play when he had Tajay Spears in the flat, which would have basically won. Well, I, t- I take that back. They needed a touchdown. So my earlier comment, it would have put us in field goal range to win the game. We still would have lost by one. We needed a touchdown. So that's that's on me. But that's my point. That is my point. You, you took it out of his hands. So, again, Tim Kelly, Vrabel, Vrabel kind of, oh, my conservative at times. It drove me nuts. You know, there's been a lot of jokes about this. I know um, Locked on Titans, Tyler made a great point, and and Rossi made a short about it when Tyler was on the show. But Tyler said, you just kept ramming it in there. It didn't matter what front you were going up against. Um, They were going to run it in there. And and they might have had the worst passing defense in the league, but the best rushing defense – but basically, Tyler said, you're just jamming it in there against the stone wall or whatever he put it. And, and that's what frustrated me. So when it when it comes to Levis, there's going to be a, a hopefully way more opportunity from Callahan. Now, Callahan, 
Hasn't called plays. I get that. He's not been a head coach. But I think he's had power where he's been allowed to adapt an offense based on needs. And we would go back to Burrow. And I wish Holmes was still in. We could ask him about that. But doing things that he does well, that's what I'm really excited about. Do you think we should trade Burks and see if we can get a fifth rounder? Oh, my gosh. If you could only get a third rounder for Snead. No, I'm kidding. Um, at this point, if you don't have a wide receiver, you probably stick with Burks. Again, some of you are going to be way more optimistic. I, I can't take you serious when you come in here and you're like, hey, this is going to be the year for Kyle Phillips. I, I just can't do it. Okay. I'm sorry. No offense to you. I just, I'm not doing this anymore. We do this all the time as Titan fans. Preseason comes. We think the new coach or a new offensive coach or a new lineman or somebody's going to just ruffle the feathers and, and a masterpiece is going to come out of some of these guys. At this point, you got to think Burks is what he is. But even with that being said, I would rather roll with Burks than Kyle Phillips any day of the week. So Burks has shown promise at times as he gets hurt, has made, had some drops. But again, I think when it comes with Burks, I guess I can listen to the idea of, okay, you got Callahan. He's worked with some great receivers. Going to have a full year of Levis. You're going to have an offensive line now, but more importantly, you're going to have two stud wide receivers where he doesn't need to be the guy. And some of you have said this many times, just throw him in the slot, see what he can do. So Levis ran over dudes in college. He will learn not to, to make better business decisions. Teak in the house. What's going on, man? Just tuned in. Do you think Rudolph can might get the starting job? I don't not starting job. But what I've been told by Steelers Nation, which I thought they would have been out on him, but Steelers Nation overall really loves this guy. We're going to fall in love with him. Now, I know there's already been people that have come in the chat and they're like, oh, well, the whole thing with Miles Garrett. Well, okay. And again, my, my argument to that is, like, with Miles Garrett, like, Miles Garrett flipped out through his helmet. Like, I have not seen anything like that before. And the problem with the story is Miles Garrett is, from what I've heard, Texas A&M, he, he was like a really good guy. It's not, this was like out of the, this wasn't normal. So if you were watching this happen live and you knew him, you would have been like, oh my gosh, like what's going on? So when he comes out and says something about why he reacted the way he did, I think a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, that's true. It had to have happened. But the way the Steelers come out and protect Rudolph, including Tomlin, Tomlin really went to bat for him. You know, it's one thing like Vrabel would do, and like, yeah, you know, you know, team first. And, you know, he, he he like would have your back, but would he really have your back? But Tomlin made a point to like all in plus some with him. And when you talk to a lot of Steelers people, they're like, yeah, they're not believing that happened one bit. You know, he might have said something, right, trash talking, but to go that way and say that word to Miles Garrett, they're not buying it. So, again, I, I wasn't there. So I'm not one of these guys that really take a side on it. I, I know Miles Garrett is a really good football player. He's been a good dude in the league, and, and that was a shame with what happened. But I don't know Mason Rudolph either. You know, I wasn't buddies with him in college. I'd never grew up with him down the neighborhood, and I definitely wasn't with him with the Steelers. But now that he's on the Titans, like, I'm not going to go back to, like, whenever that happened and, and judge him on the Titans at this point. I'm just not going to do it. And I felt like if there, there would have been more that come out to the story throughout the year and even the next year, nothing really did, and people kind of moved on and forgot about it, and Garrett never brought it up again, and – you didn't hear the Steelers talk about it anymore. But, I mean, whether you're, they're your teammate or they're not, you get my point, like, you saying stuff. That, that I don't care if you're my teammate or not. You you saying that, that that's like, it's it's hard to, to, to go to bat for you when you say, when you say that, right? Like, you know what I mean? Even if you're a teammate. So, that's where I kind of wasn't sure on the whole thing. But, but again, they're saying we're going to fall in love with the dude. Heard he's a great dude. 
and he's got a great arm in the preseason. You're going to see it, and he never had an offensive line. The difference was, you know, Russell Wilson, or I guess um, even Pickett, it could move around a little bit. But they said Rudolph's just really kind of, he is what he is. Kind of reminds me of a Zach Mettenberger as far as his movement goes. So, like, you got to protect the guy and have a pocket. If you don't, then, yeah, he's not going to succeed, and, and he didn't. He was running for his life. Uh, again, we've been at, uh, sorry, I apologize. You're sick of me saying the same thing. Um, we are now two hours and 25 minutes, and I'm still going. I don't, I don't care. We have 400 of you in here. But my point is we're 25 likes away from 200. Um, at least for the point of a dude that's going live at – one o'clock in the morning, still talking about Sneed for over two and a half hours, which honestly, it wasn't like I came in prepared. I didn't know he was going to sign tonight. I'm not even going to act like I knew, but I just love being here talking Titans with you guys and talking NFL. Like, but those three dots, boom, boom, boom. You hit those three dots. It should open up the like button. I just appreciate it. And if you are an X, just stop over at YouTube, baby, hit that sub button. I appreciate you too. You can do the follow button too, but if you follow me on X, I don't really, I'm not that active on X anymore, Twitter. But if you could come over and help us out with some of those likes, because I don't think those X things translate over to YouTube. But anyways, just throwing it out there too. Uh, what do we got? Jared has a comment. Teague, we're 100% investing in Levis. I agree with that. Um, again, Rock Hard Wallace says, I missed it. Titans give up for Snead. A 2025 third round pick. And they also swapped fours. So this is kind of what it was. It's hard to read on shorts, I know. But, again, the Titans and Chiefs finalized the deal. 2024 seventh-round pick flip-flopping the order there and then giving up a third. Apparently, he's going. you guys have told me throughout the show, four years, $76 million. I think Rossi said 55 guaranteed. A lot of money, but it is under what he was asking. He wanted 22 You got him for about 19 for the four years. So but the only question, and the, it's the last one, it's a big one that Shafter puts on there because we know the backstory here is that the trade is pending a physical. The trade is pending a physical. And with the knees, I would never question anything, but with the knees, you just never know. So it's all going to come down to the doctors. Again, a meniscus is what Titans for Life said it is. We can live with that, right? Get it kind of touched up in the offseason. He'll be ready to go by training camp. If it's something like bone on bone and it's something worse than that, that may get a red flag and that may kind of halt the deal. Fingers crossed. But again, like I said, even though we may want it, again, you're buying a new car and your buddy's a mechanic, he comes with you, and he's like, hey, wait a minute, this, this doesn't make much sense over here. There's this, this a problem right here. I don't know if I'm giving that full of a deal, even though they agreed on a great deal. I, I might back out on it. And you're like, well, it's a great deal for a car. It's a nice car. It's a car I got to have. But if it's going to break down in a year, I don't know. Maybe I'll save my money and go, like, I don't know. But but I just want to throw that out to you. The other thing my, my son <laughs> tossed out earlier, nobody else is going to toss this out tonight, trust me, nobody is, is Tredavious White. Like, what happens with Tredavious White? So when the news broke, the, the producer, which is my son, shout out to him, like, that was his immediate thought. He's like, whoa, 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 what's going to happen with Tredavious White? He's supposed to come in for a visit. Well, I think if Ran... What Ranch should do, I mean, Ranch should just play it out. Let the guy come in. It's never a bad thing to to have too many at one position, but, you know, see what he wants. If he if he's willing to come in as well and, and give you a team-friendly deal, then you know you don't necessarily at least have to draft a corner next year, this year. Now those picks could go to your linebacker, good to go to your defensive line. Although the problem with White, as we talked about, torn um, Achilles last year and then the torn ACL the year before. We haven't really seen him a whole lot on the field in two years. He was good in the beginning of his career, 2017 through 2019, 2020, but something to keep an eye on. Shizzy's in the house. What's up? Good to see you. 
Still have, uh, well, we're under 400 now, so that's not good. So Leon says I'm neutral in the Burks trade. I wouldn't mind a trade for a decent pick, but I also wouldn't mind seeing how we can um, play when completely healthy on Callahan's offense. And again, you pick up a wide receiver in the draft that you're excited about, you're going to want to get him reps. Traylon Burks or Nick westbrook Akina probably on their way out. If you don't get that guy in the draft, then you're probably letting it roll with Burks, giving him those reps. Still think down the line, if you can make yourself better, Nick Westbrook, you're only paying him $2 million. I, I mean, he's not a bad guy to have on the roster because of what he does for special teams, but I think at least he becomes expendable. One of you asked about Dowell, and I – I mean, he'll have a be at camp, but I mean, I have practice squad probably at this point. Strolls says go Steelers. Strolls, what do you think? Good question. What do you think of uh, Rudolph? Let us know what you really think of Rudolph. Miles probably misheard Rudolph in a stadium of 60K people. Strolls says I went to high school near the King Henry. Dude is a beast. Sad he's in the division. It is sad he's a Raven. I'll be honest with you there. And I'm happy for him that he got somebody to give him the money because he deserves it. King Henry deserves the money. I don't think we were ever going to give him that money here. And, I mean, we should have because of how much he's done for us, but it's good. Um, Leon says, man, we got to get to 200 light. I'm surprised Leon's still here. Leon actually did that an hour ago. And in the last hour, we've went up 20 likes. We've always had 400 people in here, but we've only, yeah, 20 likes. So eh, hopefully we'll get there. Hopefully we'll get there. We're almost there. 15 more. Come on. Rashid said, when the season starts, Titans will be a playoff caliber team. Tighten up. I hope so. Over chicken. Upload still live. Yes. Upload live. He might be going live till 6 in the morning at this point. I don't care. I do not care. I am in a good mood. And this guy does not drink. This is a family-friendly channel, okay? And I'm just saying, I'm I'm on a cloud right now. I'm 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 pumped. See, see what I'm getting here is, hey, bro, you question you channel sucks. I be questioning you, Titan fan base. Sometime it's like every time we move, we make it, it's never good enough for you guys. What are you talking about? You're on the wrong network, my friend. You're on the wrong network. I'm not going to get on you, Xavier. You know, a lot of people say X Xavier. No, it's not X Xavier. It's Xavier. Xavier. The X is silent, right? But what are you talking about? Bro, my channel sucks because I've been questioning a Titan fan? Really? Questioning me being a Titans fan? Bring up any question you want for the Tennessee Titans. This is a guy that don't miss any Titan games. All right? This is a guy that grew up Oilers, right? Moved to Tennessee. This guy moved with them. So, yeah, you want to channel my fandom? Good for you. Good for you. It is 1 o'clock in the morning, so you're, ru- you're ruining my vibes here, man. I got this thing. Fall is for football with my little T thing hanging out of it, right? There we go. And I'm enjoying life. One in the morning because we just got Sneed. And here's where I was going this before Xavier chimed in. I never really thought we were going to get him. I didn't think we were that interested. I didn't even think, I know we did our due diligence to ask, but every team asked, right? If you don't ask, you're not doing your job. That's just what it is. It, every gym probably called Kansas City and asked what they were willing to take. And I don't know what Kansas City said. I mean, I watched draft day, but that doesn't make me a, a know-it-all by any means. But I think when you go and you you try to understand this move, I thought we were giving up a first and a second or or two firsts or first this year, next year, or, or at least a first next year or maybe only a first this year or vice versa with the seconds or giving up multiple seconds. I mean, we gave up a second-round pick and I believe a fourth round pick for Julio stinking Jones. So I'm thinking, what are we going to have to give up for a corner? That's pretty good in the league. As you guys said, a number one corner, a third round pick next year. We're going to swap sevens and you're going to pay him under the value of what he's going for. 
heck yeah, sign me up. And I said that Tuesday. I never thought that was going to be an option. But it was. Here we go. Here we go. We're back. And, I, and I'm pumped. I'm pumped. Should we get another edge rusher? Heck yes. Because who's your other edge rusher at this point? Weaver? Come on. Like, no, nothing against that guy. But that guy didn't grow at all last year. And for the fact that Vrabel's gone, like, again, I understand that some of you don't like Vrabel, and that, and that's fine. It's, that's good. That's your opinion. That, that's great. But doesn't change the fact that Vrabel still did a heck of a job with a bunch of guys that nobody ever heard of. And think about all the injuries. Maybe that's Vrabel's fault. Maybe not. But all the injuries, the 90-some guys that dressed the one year, and he still pulled out a number one seed somehow. Now, we know the flaws in Vrabel and eventually caught up with us. But Vrabel still was able to get some of these guys on the defense to play better. We didn't see the same thing on offense, though. Yeah, we had Ryan Tannehill. And yeah, we had Derrick Henry. And, and that offensive line started to gel in 2019. But from that point on, you know, nobody really got better wide receiver-wise other than A.J. Brown. You can't argue Corey Davis got better. He probably stayed the same, but all these guys, they tried trotting out on the field to go along with AJ and Corey. None of them ever panned out because none of them got any better. All these linemen they brought in, they never panned out and got better, right? Raid Raidens. Again, he comes in, they tried to make him do a bunch of stuff, but he never got better. And I think ultimately when it comes to the defensive side of the ball, I don't think you can say the same thing for defense. I think, you know, you're trotting out guys like Dr. Gibby that are giving you valuable minutes on the football field. I don't know where Dr. Gibby's starting anywhere else in the league, but Vrabel got the most out of him. So you're going to lose a little bit of that next year. But, again, Weaver didn't show any growth with Vrabel last year. I am not optimistic he's just magically going to come in here this year and be take the world by storm. So, yeah, I do feel like you're going to need another edge rusher, and you're definitely going to need someone – on the defensive line to help stop the run. If that's tier tart, then do it. For a second round pick, we go linebacker right now or safety. Possibility. I don't know if they go safe. There's a lot of safeties on the market. You can get them, but those other prime positions a little bit tougher. Luke says, I don't mean to be negative, but I don't think we're ever going to see Burks fully healthy. I mean, the guy literally gets hurt in train camp untouched. And sometimes he makes world of, of plays that Minnesota, my gosh. I mean, even to that point when he got hurt, I was like, oh, my gosh. But whatever. It is what it is. Um, Duncan says, I'm happy you got Sneed for nothing. Well done. So what do you think of Sneed? Honest, honest opinion. Don't, I mean, we're going to – and I get it. I'm not I'm not fan of the whole short. But this is what YouTube wants. It's what YouTube's trying to push out. It, I mean, so like I said, we're we're trying to balance. Rossi went full screen last night. We'll go full screen Sunday night. But my question to you, Duncan, is aside from the shorts format, what did you really think of Sneed as a, as a Chiefs fan? As I'm assuming you're a Chiefs fan. Shizzy says went to sleep early. <laughs> Got woke up early to major news. Upload live. Good. To, hey, thank you, buddy. Appreciate you. Uh, it sucks. King Henry ain't with us. I agree. I, I mean, I definitely miss him. I never, uh, said the channel sucks. I've said the format. Yeah. For, I'm not a fan of the format either. Why are you doing it then? Because that's what they want to do. Like, I'm not trying to be mean, but like, it's just, it's just kind of what, what's going on. You know, like it's just what YouTube wants and, and pushes that stuff out more. Like, I don't know what the final verdict's going to be on this video. I mean, my gosh, it's two hours and 38 minutes. We've done watch parties for four hours plus. I, I've been, we're back over 400 again. If you remember the channel um, right around when the PS5s came out and the Xboxes, like one night we, we literally did this, by the way. We did up all night. We stayed up all night long, okay? Four in the morning, I got a PlayStation 5. A lot of you got PlayStation 5s uh, that were staying with me and watching the channel. We had over 700, 800 people all night long. It was great. I think we ended with like 16,000 views. It wasn't, I mean, it's, it's fine. But but at the end of the day, like, it, it was fun to hang out with everybody all night. Then 
we did a watch party for the Titans at noon. So this kid went no sleep. I shouldn't say kid. I'm an old man, but no sleep all night long. Got everybody their PlayStations 5s. I did that for them. And then turn around and do the watch party for the Titans. Let's just say I went to bed early that night. We're 10 likes away, by the way. I'm not, Luke. I'll move on. What do we think, Duncan? For what it's worth, I'm starting to really like, hey, I appreciate it. I do. I mean, people don't realize, like, again, I'll put these on the the, the screen here, and I'll do a little music just to spice it up because it's late. But, like, these guys producing um, or coming at me with Super Chats, like, th that's awesome. I mean, people are willing to invest their money in the channel. I mean, that that's awesome. If you become a member of the 145 Club and you want to invest money, in the, I mean, that that's great. But ultimately, liking the like, I mean, that that's awesome too. Hitting the subscribe button's awesome. I'm not going to say it's not, right? Some people think, you know, they, they, they overvalue subs, and that's fine, you know, whatever. Some people overvalue memberships, overvalue views, uh, clickbait titles to get you to click on something and then not even really talk about it, whatever. No, People do what they do. But it's you guys leaving comments. You guys coming in here and saying, hey, you like it or you don't, but you help us with comments. That's what I'm saying. That's what really fuels. You want to know why I'm still going live at 107 besides I'm a Titans fan and we just got sneed from the Chiefs? It's because I still have 400 people in here commenting and talking about the Titans. And we're five likes away from 200. Now, again, 200 likes on a two hour, almost three hour show, you're like, what's well, a big deal? Upload. For me, it's just it's motivation. Be honest. It's motivation to say, hey, keep going, upload. Don't stop. You got four kids. You got a one year old. You got a three year old. You know, you got a full time job. But at the end of the day, upload, show your true colors. What team you like? I'm going to tighten up, of course. So, yeah, I'm pumped up. Still pumped up. I'm probably going to be able to sleep anyways. Duncan said, Sneed can shut down every wide receiver you have on your roster without help. Okay. Now you're scaring me. When you say your roster, do you mean the Titans roster? Because it's our team, like your? Or are you talking about teams in general please tell me you're talking about teams in general if you're just telling me we can shut down every wide receiver on our roster other than d hop then you're scaring me <laughs> you're scaring me the horror movie in the house what do you think will happen with willis feel like he's never really been given a chance i kind of talked about that at some point in the show making you go back and rewatch this it's kind of probably like paint dry i'm sorry if it wasn't for the comments i mean who knows but I just basically said, like, Vrabel didn't. We hit 200. Let's go. Let's go. Appreciate you. Woohoo. That's awesome. That is awesome. So I don't know if Leon's still in here, but he is. He was supposed to gift you guys five memberships. He will. Fortunately, we're not in the big screen, so we won't see the cool present opening and all that that he usually did during the season. But I'm telling you, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. So we appreciate Leon. We appreciate you. And this guy, CJ two times, two X, says, I'm your 200th like. Appreciate you. Don't hit the unlike. All right. We're good, though. All right. We're good. Anyways, back to what we were talking about. I know it's getting late. Okay. But I appreciate you guys. Seabuck14 says, you get a like, keep pushing. Hey, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. Thanks for stopping by. Back to the Willis thing. So when it comes to Malik Willis, this is what I said earlier. I felt like Vrabel never was fully invested in him. Vrabel never allowed him to do what he needed to do. Malik is a guy that's super talented. He's athletic. He's got arm strength. That was like his main traits coming out of Liberty. Um, but the deal was when he played in games for the Titans, let's go back to the Chiefs game. I think he played against the Texans. Um, anyway, his, his games that he played – 
like he never really had an opportunity to throw the ball deep. Now, I don't know if they didn't want him to throw the ball deep. I have no idea. But that became the the issue. They didn't want him to throw deep. So against the Kansas City Chiefs, he's only, he only threw the ball 10 times. I mean, Will Levis, when he gets out there, and I was there, man, I seen it. They're letting him zing the ball all over the field. Now, I get it. The Steelers game, the last drive, they kind of took that away from Will once he hit midfield, we talked about. But when it comes to Malik, like, I am interested to see what he can do with this new coaching staff with a rebuilt offensive line, more weapons on offense, and to see if his skill set can fit this new directive direction with the team. And I think for, for those of you that say, oh, Will, uh, um, Malik Willis sucks and you know uh, he's a boss and all that, and that's fine as your opinion. But I think it'd be really silly for Rand to release him now and not at least see what he can do in the preseason. He did show a little bit of growth. I thought he showed a lot of growth from last year to this year until he actually got in the game during the regular season. That um, Raven performance in London was not good for Malik. Okay? It was not good. But remember, this was a guy who uh, in practice in, in, in his rookie year on a scrimmage, I don't know if it was against New England or it was against somebody, but on fourth down and three or whatever, he threw the ball out of bounds. To, to elude a sack, okay? Like, he's grown a lot from there. But, again, I think you'd be foolish just to stop with him. He's not competing for the starting job right now. He's probably competing for the backup, even though a lot of people think that's ultimately going to go to Rudolph. But even if he's somewhat productive in the preseason, you still might have an opportunity to trade him to a team that might be interested. And the one thing Floyd Reese talked about, Former GM for the, I think he was the best team GM for the Titans and, and Oilers was um, Floyd Reese. He would always tell you that every staff, they know their homework on all these draft guys. So even though they don't draft Will Levis, there are teams around the league that really liked Will Levis and may have drafted him if the Titans didn't in the second round. They just weren't willing to risk a first-round pick on Will Levis or trade up in the first round for Will Levis. The same has to be said for Malik Willis. That whole quarterback group from the year Malik got drafted is awful. Just absolutely awful. Most of them have been traded or with another team. So I'm just saying, like, listen, there's there, there's probably some people out there that, that would willing to give Malik a try, but if Malik shows some promise in preseason, either A, you hang on to him, or maybe you get a, something for him. Chris Ladd in the house. Any inside linebacker left in free agency? That that's a good point. I don't think there's many, but because you asked, we will look. So if we go and look at, let me see real quick. Let me get out of premium stats. So let's go back to um, free agents. Let's go to rankings. Okay, now these aren't going to be exactly updated so we obviously know patrick queen's off the board the luvulu or luvulu or whatever his name is frankie's off the board i don't know did levante david sign with anybody i mean his pro football focus score is amazing he's put up 900 snaps 1100 snaps and uh, a thousand snaps over his last three years his war score is outstanding, 16th in the league at linebacker, uh, third in 2022 with an 85.1 overall, third overall out of 81 linebackers. In 2021, he was seventh war score, but 14th. I don't know if he's still available. I mean, he's 34, but he's saying he's only going to go for about uh, $5 million. He may have signed somewhere. Brooks has signed, Wagner not sure. I don't know if Wagner signed. He's third. Yes, he signed with Washington. Jerome Baker, we were interested in. We were going to bring, we brought him in. We didn't sign him. Then Seattle did. Al Shahir signed a big deal with the Conch or with the, um, I'm sorry, with the Texans. Devin White, awful. 207, 218, 243 war score. 26, he's young. Can be explosive. Has elite, uh, elite athleticism. I don't know if he's signed anywhere. He was good during the Brady the Brady time, but I don't know if he has been. 
The Jewel guy or Jewel guy signed. Cashman signed with the Vikings. Tranquil re-signed with Kansas City. Jordan Hicks with Cleveland. I think Willie Gay signed. Did he not? You guys told me Willie Gay signed in New Orleans. Dotson signed with Seattle. Burks, Oren Burks with, I mean, he doesn't look overly impressive. Uh, Murrow signed with the uh, Bills. Barton is maybe available from Washington and doesn't look anything good. Zach Cunningham. We've already went down that rodeo. Um, Walker Jr. signed with the Dolphins. Shaq Leonard's available, maybe. I mean, he was really good in 2021. Third overall, war score, but Perryman maybe still available. Wasn't terrible. Isaiah Simmons is one guy that maybe you try to strike lightning in a bottle with. He's only 25, former first-round pick. And then the guy all the way at the bottom of the list is the guy you signed, Kenneth Murray Jr., with war scores of 200, 203, and 239. And you're paying him $15.5 million total, $7.5 million a year, 7.9 guaranteed. So roughly it's basically a one-year deal. Overall score of 34, 47, and 52 season grade. But at the end of the day, I think, you know, he, he can rush the passer, and I think that's what you're bringing him in for. So ultimately, I don't know. Does that do anything for you? Uh, let's see. From a from what I understand, the money is based on viewership. How many people will watch for a long time? I don't. I don't. Are you talking about shorts? Uh, again, this ain't about mo- shorts. Ain't gonna get you money if that's what we're talking about. Shorts, very um, yeah, very 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 low on money. Shorts um, compared to a full frame. Full frame for sure. But problem what you're facing from a lot of channels is. You got a decision to make. Uh, ultimately, I would always suggest do what you do be- do best, and I and I, and do what you do what you love the best. And do I love shorts? Not really. I, I do feel like shorts gives me the opportunity to go live right away quicker than a, a full frame. I couldn't imagine going full frame with no graphics since I was just not me. But is anybody going to go back and watch this video for no? It, as soon as we're done live, it, it, it's going to die. It's going to be dead. But at the end of the day, like, you know, I don't know. Like, just they're they're saying, like, so many YouTubers. Uh, I'm talking about not me, but I'm talking about, like, these gurus that have millions and millions of millions of subs. Like, when shorts came around and now it's fully going through the motion here, like, 60 to 70% of their viewers are only watching shorts on their channel now. That means 30% are watching full frame videos and some just call the quits. All right. There it is. Leon shout out to Leon gave everybody memberships. Well, five people memberships. So shout out to Leon. So who got the memberships? It's all by random, right? So we got Jackson Davis became a member tonight, even though he may not have wanted to fade became a member tonight. Uh, Bree was gifted a membership tonight. Baked, uh, BHO became a member and Thea D became a member. So shout out again to our guy, Leon. So you get a free month of membership. What does that get you? Well, it gets you a little cool icon. You get to be a part of the one, four, five club, but at least you, you picked a good time to buy in, I guess, because like I said, we're going to be pumping out draft content on there first. And then eventually we'll get it to the main main group. But uh, yeah, that's my little bit of a a nugget for those guys who have been so so loyal to the channel. So appreciate you so much, Leon. Teak, what's going on? And then oh my gosh, Leon's given five more. Holy crap, Leon is the man. Chris Ladd says upload the goat. Appreciate it, buddy. So Leon should be the goat. He was our one four five member of the year for how much he's done for the channel. Uh, so we got Butler's membership, membership, uh, realize the membership. Jay realized we got the robot guy in here. Free membership. Dr. Phil Billy. Interesting name. It's almost as cool as Dr. Gibby. Seabuck says Willis thinks too much and, um, thinks way too much and has the, all the talent that can get him hurt badly, but that also hopefully through 
time and, and confidence and a coach that believes in him, maybe things will turn around for him. And, and again, we get to the Conquo, Chris. I know the drops were concerned, but he did turn it on late. I don't have a problem with having a Conquo, but I do feel like you could also upgrade tight end for sure. Uh, it's going to be a big change. I want to be clear. I'm not against the Titans, and I'm not against the channel. I'm mad that you got a true lockdown corner for nothing. Well said, Duncan. And, and to be quite honest, Duncan, we we give you always a lot of credit on the channel. To be fair, where where some may ignore because you're a Chiefs fan, we do not do that on this channel, and we we show a lot of love towards you. And now it's your time to shine because we just picked up a guy who used to play for your team. Super chat from the uh, the horde group. Uh, so we got movie snub. So, again, what's your favorite scary movie? Mine is, I don't know what my favorite scary movie is. I was always a, a Freddy guy growing up. Like, Freddy 2, was Freddy 2 where he's on the bus, driving the, the, the bus of kids off the cliff? Um, but, yeah, Freddy, like, freaked me out. Like, I, I liked watching Freddy, but after watching him, I, I just would freak out. But, yeah, I would probably go with Nightmare on Elm Street. Those were probably my favorites. Uh, if we're getting into that, but anyways, back to the super chat says, awesome to see your channel grow. Thanks for making school. So enjoyable. Also shout out to you. Appreciate you. All right, let's keep going. Dang it. Uh, storm says, uh, dang it upload. I was planning to get sleep 40 minutes ago. Davis resigned with the bucks. Okay. So you guys are keeping me accountable there. You are right. See again, pro football focus is way behind one of that. When, when it comes to that, usually I would look all that stuff up, but I did it on the fly here. We solidify the, the line on offense. We're looking good. I agree with that. I, I think you need to have a good offensive line to be productive. And that's the one thing John Robinson really valued. And that's why we won a lot of gains early. Uh, I get the trade maybe feels like nothing to Chiefs fans, but quite a pickup for the Titans. I, I, I would be disappointed if they don't use his talents to their full potential, says Lee. I, I agree. I agree. Uh, uh, from the point of Sneed, though, you're we're welcoming with open arms, man. The, the Titans are going to love them. Titans are already loving them. Titans loved them before we even had them. Well, if you aren't on the bottom, the only way you can go is up. You're true. That is so true. Sean says, congrats on the Sneed trade. Appreciate it, Sean. Chris said, what round should we draft a linebacker, inside linebacker? Well, I mean, I think it opens up at 38. Um, I know Power Hour would disagree with that. He says there's nobody worthy of a second round pick. I think there are a few. And then it would you just hope hoping on for dear life in the fourth round, which hurts that you don't have a third round pick, but now you don't have a third round pick next year either. But that's okay because you got a corner. So again, I I think you look at your board, you take your tackle, hopefully the you know, alt, okay, or Fashano were there from Penn State. 38 comes, you got some wiggle room. I mean, do you take a wide receiver there? Because, you know, like Hopkins probably won't be around next year. Do you take a defense alignment? Do you get an edge rusher there? Do you do the non-popular choice? Do you, do you take the right tackle? Try that again. Do you take a tight end? Is there a tight end worthy of the, of the discussion? Because right now it's like Wesco and it's, you know, I mean, maybe we bring back Anthony Ferks, or I'm kidding, but but that's kind of where we're at. Again, if you're just joining, I'm not making a big ploy on the likes, but again, if you hit those three dots, there's a like button, and certainly hit that subscribe button. We'd appreciate it. I'll even throw this your way just for fun. Bam. Hit that subscribe button. We appreciate it. Anyways, I'm moving on. So Blackheart said, congrats. Leanne says, sorry, Duncan. Uh, I wish YouTube would let the gift membership to specific people, but it doesn't. Um, why wouldn't I want a membership? Thank you. Hey, appreciate it, Jackson. I don't think anybody else said thank you for that. Is Traylon Burks just Johnu Smith 2.0 in a Browns uniform? I don't, I would say Traylon Burks. I don't think he's better than Corey Davis at this point. I know Corey Davis gets a lot of uh, hate. Um, because he was drafted at five, but I, I I don't think he's nearly as productive as Corey Davis. But I still think it's it's early for Traylon, right? I mean, got to give him one more year. Brock Bowers are top offensive lineman with the pick in the first for the Titans. Sean says I 
Uh, sorry, former president. We're going to stop the spam in here. So I'm going to take that one for the team there. Um, I would love Brock Bowers. I would if, if there wasn't a need at left tackle. But I think you can somewhat be productive without a Travis Kelsey on your team. I don't think you can be productive without a left tackle. And technically, we don't have a right tackle either. So, yeah. Sorry, I'm just catching up. Sorry about all the bots. Uh, we got Creep Show in the house. Is that your favorite scary movie? Upload. I went to the Auburn. Oh, my gosh. Over Chicken went to the basketball game. Came back for, oh, yeah, uh, Grand Canyon. Upsetting St. Mary's. Holy crap. The two upsets. I didn't know they were in the same place. That's awesome. How does John, you we know what, Seabuck? If there was a dream for this channel, I'm going to go ahead and say it. We're three hour mark, by the way. It's like nothing. I mean, when you do watch parties all the time, it's nothing, man. Three hours have just flew by. Okay. I would have been up anyway. So, what up, whatever. When you look, when John, the, the dream of the channel, it's it's always been like to have Eddie George on the channel because he's been like my hero growing up as a kid, other than my dad. But if there's anything that we want from this channel, it would it would mean to bring in John Robinson and interview him because nobody else has. We have not heard anything from John Robinson, other than possibly trying to get another job as a scout or something else from a different team. So bringing in John, we could ask him those tough questions. What really happened? Did you get fired because of AJ? Did you get fired because of the draft? Did Vrabel stab you in the back? You're speaking, speaking of scary movies. That's what we want to know. And I made a short about the whole thing with Vrabel and Rayan but I really got to go back and make one about J-Rob and Vrabel, J-Rob and Amy, because that's the one Titan fans really want to know. And we may never know until we all pass away or whatever, but the bottom line is having John Robinson on the channel to have that interview would be, be electric. Nobody's done it. He has not talked to anybody as far as I know. He's not paired on any pods. I think that would be a great catch for us, but we'll keep dreaming. We'll keep trying to see what we can do. There's the Titan Upload Network. Shout out to you. Joe says Steelers are better, but I'm honestly, I'm pretty impressed with your level of devotion to the Titans. Thank you, Joe, because I just had someone tell me that I didn't like the Titans and my channel sucked because of that fact. Okay. Could it have been, um, I don't know. Could it have been a undercover spy of who knows? Someone with a fake name, maybe. But honestly, yeah, I think people that know me wouldn't quite. Now, I'm not like the ones that, you know, get their pom-poms out and, hey, everything's great all the time. Hey, we just lost 48 to nothing. Hey, it's okay because we still got Derrick Henry on the team. Let's go. Go, team, go. You know, like, hey, we just traded AJ. Hey, it's okay. Everything's great. No, I'm not that kind of guy. But at the end of the day, like, I'm not afraid to, hey, if I don't think this is going well, like, for example, it's the closest example I can get, well, more you know, realistic time frame, Andre Dillard. Like, Andre Dillard, when he signed with the Titans, like, I was like, well, at first I didn't know. And I kind of, like, went on the, the Eagles side and was like, hey, like, who's this guy, you know? Former first-round pick, maybe, maybe just got injured, didn't work out, and they're like, nah. Nah, he's not very good. Not good at all, actually. Yeah. And he was terrible. You know, when we got Dennis Kelly from the Eagles, I, I didn't know a lot about Dennis Kelly, but, but you know, he, he apparently was an okay backup, and that's what he was brought here. Dillard, no. So, so again, like, I wasn't going to go on here and hoot and holler once I found that information out and say how great of a pickup that was, like some did. That's just me. And I know some people are, well, you're not a fan. Then that's nothing to do with being a fan. I mean, we care the most. We care the most. That That's the problem. You know, like we care the most. Yes, the format's terrible. Understand. True. 
Okay. Hopefully you come back on uh, Sunday night. We'll have the full frame. We actually are one of the only ones that do the wide frame and the wide frame is actually freaking phenomenal. So definitely come back for that. If we get clowny, we are going to the playoffs next year. In my opinion, I did throw that out there, Jacob, about clowny because the one thing clowny never did as a Titan that we all wanted him to do was get sacks. And I don't think he got any sacks. He had a half a sack once I think. And then you let the guy go, but Clowney had nine and a half sacks with the Ravens last year. Kind of a big deal. You know, having nine and a half sacks on this defensive line with Landry and Sim, that would, that would be nice. Let's go upload. We got Snead again. You guys keep me on my toes. I appreciate it. If you're just joining us in 57, re- Le- we got to shout out Leon one more time. Leon's been phenomenal. Tonight. It says in 57 regular season games, Snead has 10 interceptions, 40 pass this passes defended. He has one interception and seven passes defended in 13 postseason game. So he's given you both the regular season and the postseason. I just pretty much gave you the regular season, but the thing I was excited about Snead was the okay. What what I was happy about Snead is the hey, if I'm throwing your way, like quarterbacks are only getting 55 passer rating. Um, and he had like a 51% completion percentage, and he was under 10 yards per reception. That's what I'm excited about. Uh, what else we got? I miss Pop-Tart. Maybe he'll come back. Who knows? Uh, I'm being biased, but if we trade down, uh, I'm taking a D-line and a left tackle in the next two rounds. What else we got here? Hawkins says, I don't know what we have in Wesco. I thought we had Wiley on our roster behind you. You're right. I forgot about Wiley, but I'm not sold on Wiley. Wiley had a lot of drops. I mean, again, maybe Callahan changes that, but yeah, I, I, that's my bad. I did not mention him, but yeah, you're right. He's still on the team. JS 75. If the O-line is top 10 ran, throws a curveball and go trade down and draft some defensive players up upload. We already got to that one. So, yeah. So right now, again, we have six super chats tonight. Again, I'll throw them up there one more time. We have Christopher Stone, we have Stanley, we have Leon, William, Titan, and the horror movie snob. So all them, appreciate them. And then we have Leon giving away all those gift memberships. He gave away 10 memberships tonight. So shout out to Leon for that. Um, let's, let's just one more time before we kind of call it a night. And then I can go start prepping for the draft stuff. Um, I'll throw that on there one more time. Why not? But let's put this on there. Bam. Okay. So this kind of this is what we're all talking about and why you're here. This is how we start. This is how we end. But again, 2025 third round pick from uh, and a 2024 switching sevenths around. Why Sneed um, will get a new contract? I, I would say the only wrench in this is the fact that, you know, he's got to pass the physical. I mean, that's kind of standard, but we heard a lot about the knee injuries and or the knees bothering him and the knees being a big deal from Kansas City Radio, so we weren't sure if the Kansas City Chiefs were floating that out there to get a better deal for him. But ultimately, the deal apparently that was rumored was four years 80. Rand was able to cash in with four years 76. And he wanted $22 million, he did, before he would sign off on it. Apparently, he changed his tune, and um, he signed off on 76 which is roughly like, what, nine, you guys are saying $19 million a year. So that's kind of the last question I'll ask before we leave is kind of what Hawkins is asking is, what direction do you want to go now? What should Rand focus on now? He still does have Tredavious White, as far as we know, coming in for a visit. Do you want to bring him in? Sign him? 